Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome. Uh, it's not exactly a happy stream. It's not exactly a great stream, but it is a stream nonetheless. Uh, so we are here, uh, mostly people that were in the uh, mod call with what's been going on recently. Um, I was over on Drunken Peasants explaining what was going on, so feel free to check that one out. Um, I'm only there for like the first hour and a some time, so if you go and find it and it's four hours long, it's it's not really, don't panic. Um, there's been some nonsense going on, I'm sure most of you have been following what's been going on. If you are behind, feel free to check out uh, those, the mod call is out there, um, the mediation call is now out there, um, so feel free to, to watch those on your own time and, and come on back here. Um, I'll be keeping an eye on questions in the side chat. For the most part, I'll grab what I can. Um, most of the questions, I think, have pretty much been answered uh, by either the mod call or the mediation call. So take that for what it is. Um, the people that are in here were in the mod call, as well as Rev, who was kind enough to step forward and give me a hand with um, with what had gone on. And I think it's only appropriate that we let uh, let Reverend go first. So... Hi everybody, and hi Reverend. How how y'all doing? Hey, thanks for uh, letting me on here. Um, I'm gonna try and make this pretty brief, okay? Um, I kind of wrote a statement that I'm just gonna read out, and then if there's any questions, y'all can uh, hit me up. All right? Yep, sounds good. Okay. Last night I saw one of the most egregious acts of desperation online I have ever seen as the two lady enforcers for McRae lied repeatedly on livestream in order to attempt to shift the narrative and public opinion away from Cheshire and back to McRae himself. From claiming multiple times that the fact sheet they were reading from was verified by a third party to outright mocking those in the live chat of the stream as it was debunked live. How do I know that the fact sheet was a load of bogus bullshit? I was there in Chesha's corner from shortly after the original mediation call to the end when Steve stonewalled by giving us an insultingly low number as his maximum negotiable amount. I watched as 2.7, two and three quarters years of effort of a person that I consider a friend was ignored and declared irrelevant. I watched as two middle-aged women cackled in glee at the garbage they were reading and attempted to defend said garbage. I'm not going to sit here and live debunk the entire fact sheet that Steve released. I will point out that 90 plus percent of the document is fabrication and created to set up a narrative of the evil people coming to fraudulently claim exorbitant amounts and in doing so create a blackmail scenario. Yes, that is what's being claimed. No, that is not anywhere close to the realm of truth. McRae's way of thinking is that because Cheshire wanted full transparency, that she would weaponize the negotiations. Yet when McRae was embroiled in the first non sequitur show debacle and sued Kyle, he wanted transparency as the rule. McRae even stated in the past that all future non sequitur show dealings would be fully transparent. Yet he wished to keep this mediation a secret. Why would that be? You tell me. The court of public opinion has spoken, and its verdict is that Steve McRae has once again destroyed a community by causing a split and avoiding criticism of any type. As to the 50K, the original amount that we used in our counter proposal was in fact a good faith effort at negotiating. Cheshire was asked again and again for a number, but when finally presented with the number, it was declared unilaterally un reasonable. Though McRae had unilaterally made the decision to pull in Chris and go into mediation with Cheshire by stating that this is what we're doing and this is who will mediate. When pushed for a number from Steve McRae, it was a middle finger to the th two and three quarters years of work that Chesh put in. To me, it's clear. If Steve had to hire people to do what he had her doing for the past two and three quarters years, 
it would probably cost them around $200,000. However, if she wasn't a partner all this time, then $50,000 for two and three quarters years work would be a fair severance. Or Steve could have just stuck to his word and kept her on as a partner. The fifteen k was both introduced and dismissed as a gesture of good faith in the second mediation call and had nothing to do with why Cheshire decided to walk away. We have to understand that this woman entered into what she believed was an equal partnership agreement, only to have the carpet pulled out from under her by the person that she thought was her partner and declared to be nothing more than a mere hireling working for slave wages. Chris, the non-neutral moderator, backed up McCray's side and tabled issues that were important not only to the negotiation, but to Cheshire herself. Chris stated at the beginning of the meeting that he had talked with Steve to get an understanding of the situation. Chris, for good or ill, was starting with one-sided and faulty understanding of the issue from the beginning. The very fact that Steve had paid Chris for YouTube work in the past creates a massive conflict of interest, and at the very least, Chris should have recused himself from being the mediator in the first place. As far as who released the first mediation call, I can state for certain that it was not Cheshire or Manya. I am the one who released the first mediation call. My reasons are my own, and I was held by no moratorium or NDA at the point that I released it. Nobody is a saint in this. No one's behavior for the past two and three quarters years has been exemplary. Everyone has made decisions that hurt people in some way or another. Let the bridges I burn light my path ahead. Any questions? Um, Damn! Yeah, I think that was very well said. Ooh, fire! Ooh, my my whole office is like burned up and hot. Ooh, ooh! <laughs> All right, good job, mate. Yeah, that's that. There's a lot in there. Um, I don't see any questions in the chat so far. Um, do you want to? Uh, is there anything you wanted to elaborate on? No, so, I pretty much said what I'm going to. Uh, unless there's questions, I'm just going to pretty much go radio silent for a while and just do my art and get back to my first love of writing and art. All right, sounds good. I'm just going to let, if you don't mind sticking around just long enough to let, because uh, Rev is going to have to leave a little bit early because he is busy. Um, uh, if there are any questions, I'm going to go ahead and... Um, grab them in the side chat um, and let you know if anything comes in, but uh, I think it's cool if we let everybody kind of maybe comment on what you had to say, if they have any follow-ups or anything in general. Then we'll kind of go in order. Uh, sure, I mean, I'll, I'll go first. Yeah. Uh, I thought everything you said was awesome. Uh, thanks for saying what you said. Thanks for being there for Chesh this entire time. I was um, suspect of Chris doing the mediation the second that uh, Steve brought up Chris in the me in the immediate split second that mediation might have uh, like it might have needed to be done. He immediately brought up Chris like as if like that was um, his best like option. He was ready for it as if and he was planning it. So my immediate um, thought was like what what's in Chesh's best interest? And I, I think that you were definitely were that person. So thank you very much for being that person. Thank you. Yeah, I don't really have a question so much as it's just good to have Rev back. And it's fucking refreshing. <laughs> you might even yeah, say Rev, is... Rev freshing. Uh... <laughs> nice. So I have a question. So... Steve Steve claimed that I if I'm not wrong, let me bring up that fucking moronic fact sheet that Steve was going on about. Faxing quotes, um, quotation marks. 
yeah, like garbage sheet, if I might say. So, um, so Steve was talking about blackmailing and stuff, right? So, was there any blackmail on your guys' part? None whatsoever. None whatsoever. And there was also this talk about you guys wanting 15k additional. What was that about? If you would like to explain, please. Again. That was, <clears throat> that was for when he broke the moratorium. What's a moratorium? Can you elaborate on that for the people in the live chat? Can you do that? Okay. Remember there was the rumor going around of a 48 hour don't talk about anything. Yeah. That's a moratorium. Got it. Okay. And so when, yeah. when you finish. When, Yay. Hush you. <laughs> hush you or I'm going to start charging you by the minute. Um, <laughs> so the original agreement was 48 hours, which was made after your original tweet. So it was made yeah. within the last like five to 10 minutes of the mod call yes. of the uh, media yes. mediation call. So that was and after your tweet. If I may add to that, let me just add to that. It was about not to discuss the mediation call, nothing else. It was to not discuss the mediation call and yes. negotiations therein. Yes. Continue. Thank you. And uh, that's it right there. So um, we never broke the moratorium. It was never there uh, for what um, Manya had already done. Because when you compare the timestamp, to when the moratorium went into place, she's clear. So, Steve trying to put out there that I somehow jeopardized the negotiations is just him being a crybaby or nothing. It's him attempting to set his own narrative to push things forward in the direction that he wants it to go. In other words, it's bullshit. Shifting the burden Not of it. responsibility. Nice. So, so a moratorium is there's an agreement between two parties and they decide what to talk about and not to talk about. That's what it is. So well, no, you were it's, asking. It's, the, it's a, it's a temporary, it's a temporary limitation. Yeah. Got it. So the 15 K was because Steve broke that moratorium. Right. Because we felt it was being taken seriously. So it's like, okay, you know what? Because you broke this, we're going to up our ask by $15,000 because you did it this way. It's a matter of taking it seriously and demonstrating that you're taking it seriously, especially with the character assassination he's going on. Like, realistically, you'd think that somebody who's dealing with Katie Joy the way he is would know what defamation actually is and how it applies to this kind of a situation. Exactly. So um, I'll come up with a follow-up question on that. So how did he, ex so you said he broke the moratorium. How exactly did he break it? Would you like to elaborate on that? We know from multiple sources that he was discussing the negotiations in direct message before the moratorium was lifted. You have to remember the moratorium was extended to cover the entire period of negotiations until they ended. Yes, I'm aware of, of that. That's why I did not make any more tweets after the two tweets I made. So, because I was informed that um, the moratorium had been extended. And I, even though I wasn't part of the negotiations after that, I chose in Chesh's best interest, or even, you know, just not to make things more complicated, I decided to keep my mouth shut. But Steve, on the other hand, he was going in private messages and discussing the mediation well not just private As messages the, uh if you're if anybody who is in or has been in the nss discord which is a public discord um as well as facebook yeah yeah that discord from is public where? yeah and i uh, i think i'll be banned from there i think <laughs> uh, uh, that's for another day uh, i guess how can we prove that the nss discord is public because i could go right now and get into that discord 
I know where to find the link. Therefore, it's public. So, um, Pan Tarang from the live chat has asked a question. Um, in the first mod call, everybody thought Chet should get 50% of NSS from the day it started, but in Drunken Peasant stream, Chet said she never wanted that. What am I missing? Um, the answer to that is it. there is two different things being discussed. Um, I've never had any contention with that Steve is owner of the channel. That I've never had any issue with that. It's it, There's a difference between um, what was discussed as in 50%. If you've listened to the mediation call as well as the mod call, there's a difference between 50% of profits of the channel on a whole and 50% of like the quote unquote YouTube channel versus like what the business as a whole should or ought to be or ought to function if it Steve actually ever turned it into a business like he said he was going to, which he never actually did. So I've never I've never actually contested, to be clear. I am not contesting the original agreement in any way, shape, or form. And if you listen to the mod call, neither is Steve. Every time I describe it, he says yes. Exactly. So I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, um, Chesh, difference. can you lower my volume down at your end because people are saying I'm too loud in the oh, yeah. in the yeah. Well, there and, you go. Um, There's a difference between fifty percent of the owning of a channel and different and fifty percent of the running of a channel. Yeah, so like exactly. one person can it has to own the channel technically, quote unquote. But he Steve wanted to run everything. He wanted to have final say on everything. Business. So, I've, I've yeah. also never it, contested Steve being like the owner of the business because one of the things that we had discussed with Bool, actually, that's how long ago it was, was the functionality and what a business looks like on paper, right? And what was suggested was that I be a contractor for the sake of taxes. And I said, sure, if that works, no problem. But let give me the paperwork when you get the uh, when you get that paperwork together, and then he just never did. Because there's well, a diff there's also a difference between that and the functionality of the business, where it's like, hey, listen, on paper it's gonna look like this, and now within that that terminology and within that umbrella, we're operating and working and agreeing to this, and this is how we're gonna operate. Nerd yeah. Angle brings up a good point. He says LLC could own the channel, but Co I mean, correct. you brought up putting the channel in a third, like a third party thing. Yeah. But I mean, how'd that work out? Well, I mean, <laughs> I imagine thinking that it would be a good idea to have funds be going into a separate um, AdSense and into a separate account so that uh, everybody, so, you know, for the sake of transparency, go figure. Just yeah, send it to yeah. Kyle and uh, and let Kyle do it up afterwards. Okay, you guys will. <laughs> All right. So one of the things that that Steve came back for um, when he brought back his, uh, I can't even call it a counter proposal, but when he brought back his offer in response to my counter proposal, which now he is calling a demand letter, which it is not. Um, he. <laughs> He offered to pay me for December and January what he believed was reasonable when he got paid that money. But the thing is, is he might never get paid that money because he sent December at the very least, and if not January, to Kyle. So that this is not a joke. This is not a joke. This is serious. He actually took the non sequitur show money. The reason why he's complaining about having to pay me out of pocket is because he hasn't received any money from non sequitur. And the reason he hasn't received any money from non sequitur is because he sent the money to Kyle. But he's so business minded. And he's so ethical. Oh my god. <laughs> um. Anyway, sorry. Someone in the live chat asked me um, how much did I give to Steve over the last few years. Well, it was around 1100 USD. That's just the GoFundMes. Just the GoFundMes. And yeah, people have seen me give a lot to Steve via Super Chats and stuff, which is fine. I chose to give that money away, so no hard feelings. Um... He's firstly from the live chat is asking, do you have those recordings of him saying the stuff about the 50-50 and do you plan on playing those recordings you spoke about? 
we have we have we have instances on live streams where Steve has called Shesh's partner, and uh, in one of the drunken uh, peasants episodes, Steve actually said that Shesh is two point file two point oh, if I remember that correctly. Oh yeah, that's that was Shishkin. an ongoing thing. So, um, there's yeah. I don't want to dive too too far into questions before we kind of get everybody's feelings about like the mod call yeah. and how you guys have felt kind of watching all this uh, go down. Um, but uh, there's a couple of questions that that uh, are about Steve sending the money to Kyle. Uh, okay, he didn't change the AdSense over, so the money from non sequitur AdSense never got like the AdSense to non sequitur didn't get changed so it went directly to kyle it was not purposeful as far as i know but kyle has no obligation to give that money back and steve was you probably probably saw steve complaining about youtube not understanding um what he was saying and what he was asking i had to convince steve to contact his lawyer about getting the adsense changed i had to convince him months after the fact it was bizarre. Um, thank you, Laura, and thank you, Ghost Dog. Uh, why did he send money to Kyle? Uh, I'm pretty sure it was completely accidental. Um, okay, so um, do you guys want to kind of talk about how you sort of felt during the meeting, uh, like during the mod meeting that you got dragged into? And then do you want to kind of, I'm sh assuming most of you have seen the mediation at this point. I was rather bemused for most of it. Uh, well, especially the early parts, because I was like, are we talking about the channel or are we meant to be talking about finances here? Because as I said to Steve several times, this should have been done back in December, like this hashing out of an agreement. And I was under the I was under the impression that you and Steve had a 50-50, ooh, excuse me, a 50-50 partnership, not, not uh, you know, you own 50% of the channel, but you get 50% like of the responsibility and you get 50% of the revenue. Right. That's what I would have considered the partnership. Yeah, same. Aspect. Yeah. Um, and to suddenly Jared draggle the mods in and renegle that agreement, which I guess, I, I guess it was my naivete work because I thought like you'd already made a written contract and stuff, but that's why I never thought to bring it up to you before, but like yeah uncomfortable for my, for a lot of the mod chat and then very frustrated when trying to explain simple things to steve especially especially that bit where he goes like i'm like look steve 50 50 can mean such and such and he's like yes jack thank you and i'm like no steve that's not i'm not agreeing with you it means you need to be more clear yeah um I mean, at least at the end of the day, you're not going to have to deal with this bullshit anymore. The thing is that he was... he. It's funny how he wanted us to be involved in, in the talk about financials. He made that call. And as soon as he realized that it, it just blew up in his face, he wanted everything to be hush-hush and behind the scenes. Well, that is some things that, that I mentioned that... Um... Nobody was talking about that aspect of the show. We were all coming in there trying to make the show, you know, whatever aspects we thought were, um, you know, lacking or like needed work on. We were trying to like yeah. collect our thoughts and be like, okay, some things have been going wrong for whatever reason. And we just want to know if you're okay. We want to know, you know, a bunch of different things. But I don't know why he initiated that. And it became almost like antagonistic towards Shesh in a way. Yeah, I have a theory. He wanted to dunk on Shesh in that call. He thought him bringing uh, he asking he thought that if he asked for feedback and we if we gave negative feedback, he could try and point it towards Shesh or direct it towards Shesh. What he didn't realize was that we were, we went in that call objectively, and whatever feedback we gave was an objective feedback, not personal in any sense. And and he started sure. to clam up after that as soon as he realized that it was not going you should have seen like anyone who's seen the mod call has seen how steve started to clam up immediately when he realized that if no one was dunking on chesh and as soon as he got in the financials it just which he wanted to do it just went a like it went to shit after that because and it might have been... to listen to chesh yeah go on please it might have just been 
a case of differing tastes or something, because if Steve, apparently from what I heard on the Drunken Peasants, if what he communicated is that he was hearing from other people that they didn't like Chesh's art or that he didn't like Chesh's art, that's something he needs to bring up with her and communicate with her. Like, you know, maybe we want a little bit of a different style, but nobody in that call said anything. None of the mods said anything like that to Chesh. You know, we were all like pretty much like, yeah, this is a good style. Um, and Chesh has asked us for feedback and we've given it about certain things. So it was it was a natural back and forth. There was no antagonism in that aspect of things. Uh, real quick. Yeah, I mean, how many? Sorry, Chesh, go ahead. I was just going to real quick get some of the messages. Uh, Hawkskull said Steve's misuse of the word veto irked me uh, in the most during the negotiation. He deliberately misused the word. Yeah, I found that really bizarre. <laughs> Um, and Go uh, Ghost Dog said, uh, why was none of this written down with a lawyer? So, I had, basically, we had agreed to writing, like, having a written agreement. Um, Steve was supposed to be working on it. He never got back to me with anything. So, late January, I wrote up something that looked like crap. I'm not gonna lie, I did not, I, I just took a template and tried to come up with, like, something. Because this isn't what I do. I'm not good at this. I'm not gonna pretend there that I knew attempt. what I was going to. There was an attempt. <laughs> um, I sent it to him and he acted, he, he responded confused as to why I would want a written agreement. Which was, like, already, like, uh, I mean, that is what we what? agreed on, so I don't know why that would be a, why, what? Um, and then he took a look at it and said he was gonna go ahead and, um, take that, make some, uh, make it look nicer, basically, and send it back to me, and then he never did. Sure, yeah, and the, also that, that comment from the mod call that you brought up about the... Mm you know, quibbling and everybody quibbled back and forth about like, oh, you expect to be paid for the shows you're on. It's like, yeah, this stuff should have been, you know, hashed out earlier because... Like, yeah, I didn't even realize like, it was in question. Because <laughs> you doing the art, why, if you were a partner with him in a more general sense, would he not be like, okay, this is my art now, if you weren't? Because then, if you were a partner, you could have come up and said, um, you know oh, do you think that you get to use the art that I made? Like, you know what I mean? I, and I think Steve would agree to that, that that would be a good, like, you know, analogous, like, retort to what he said, because it's like, yeah, if we're partners, then we're partners on this thing. We need to figure out what that means if we're not clear at this moment. And there was just a massive miscommunication that was not resolved. And that is just, I don't know, it... it it hurts me when stuff like this happens. I, uh, I don't know at this point that, um, because that, that was part of the thing of if I don't mind, and I said during the mediation call and the mod call, it, if you want to change the agreement or make adjustments or whatever, that's fine. We can do that. If you want to move me to a contract position, that's fine. We just need to resolve the, uh, uh, the previous agreement. Right, like I don't really have any any issues in in that. And I think case. I think that's why there's this gigantic contention, and why, you know, Steve laughed during that meeting about like your you know numbers that you brought up, and it's like because he didn't, he wasn't thinking about the consequences of actually like applying that retroactively. Mm -hmm. That is, that is a big deal. That is something that someone could do. I mean, if I may add to that, th I think in other th circumstances, Steve would be lucky not to be, you know, suffering worse consequences for being in that kind of relationship and not explaining the differences and what in what he's actually saying. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, that's another thing that kind of made me really pissed off at Steve. He, the amount of entitlement that Steve has shown in regards to other people's labor in last few weeks has astounded me actually and made me really angry. Like how the way he belittled like saying, oh, Shesh worked for herself also while she was working for me for two years or while she was working to for the NSS community or the, you know, the NSS channel, um, Shesh also gained from that. I'm like, when the mass exo exodus happened from the NSS channel, it came to you, Steve. It didn't come to Shesh. 
Yeah, nobody and, knew who I was uh, at that point. I came out yeah, of nowhere. <laughs> when you, yeah, when you did all the updates on the court documents on your channel, you got those views and numbers and whatever super chats that came your way. Not Shesh. And then if you notice in the mod call, when we told him that he should come in the Discord server more, he's like, oh no, I gave it to Surgeon General and he could do anything. He could do yeah, anything. People that care about him. People yeah. that care about him have been worried about him and want to like communicate with him like more. And he's just like, no, I don't want to do that there. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah. And, and then the, like, why would Surgeon General do it for you for free? Why would he do it for you for free? Just because he's your friend the, like he's not your employee he's not your partner in the channel why should he d look after the discord server for you why the fuck this should be a lesson for everybody out there listening that if steve ever asks you to do anything even if he is your friend you make sure that you get an invoice and charge him up front and don't do the thing until you get paid, because your labor is worth something, and he he does not care about what you do for him. He he values what you do for him as nothing, as a zero. And it doesn't matter if you're here, you're the, his best friend in the world. Your labor is meaningless to him. So at the very least, get what you're worth before you lift a finger for this man. Hold on, there's um. Okay. Super chat. Uh, yeah, I've got I'd like it. To answer that. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Here, I'll just read it out for you. Then you you go right ahead. Um, so it was Ice Queen. They had asked, "Do you feel like you burned bridges because Steve used the same character assassination tactics he's using on you now to convince you others who simply didn't align with him were trolls?" In quotes. Yes, absolutely. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The way he tried to blame me for derailing the negotiations and the mediation, that was absolutely horrendous on his part. And, and, and I'm not being the call today, I, I was already talking to, to Steve in his comments about this, how I did not see what you did as being like equivalent to people who are gonna be unnamed at this point. But um like after seeing that moderation call, you talked like twice. You talked like two, three times. Yeah, just well, like no, two, you, three times. You, got, up, you was, got upset when people were being, you know, when communication was breaking down a little bit and you spoke up. Yeah, I made the point and I refused Steve to let gaslight Shesh. I was like, no, you're not going to do that there. There was and... a lot of Steve saying I have a problem with something and a whole lot of me saying I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. Yeah, he was trying to speak for you and telling you what you meant, which is a perfect example of gaslighting and I, <laughs> I, I, sorry it's it's also like he kept doing that and blamed me for derailing the negotiations when he was the one who laughed at the number that Shesh gave out and it wasn't like the num she wasn't asking for that amount of money she was just giving Steven a big picture dude this is what someone of my caliber will cost you in the real world out there. He still lives in a fantasy land for, for like in the last few weeks, I've realized that he just, he doesn't live in the reality. He doesn't realize that maybe because Ruhip paid for all the whole, you know, this NSS case. So he doesn't realize how much, you know, how much it costs. He has lost that, you know, relevancy, you know, and that relatability and reference like um, of how, so, actually people's times and labor costs um so ridiculous. i do want to answer two quick questions i have not seen ekc's video yet and i have not read the fact sheet yet i didn't have time i was busy last night so i and i was up to something before this so i haven't actually had a chance to look at it yet so um i'm not i don't really have too much of an opinion on that um I, they're welcome to comment whatever they want on However, like whatever's public, like they, I've I've said this before and I stand by it. If, if something happens publicly, you don't need to talk to somebody in private to comment on what has happened publicly. If there's some kind of miscommunication or miscommunication or misinformation that's gone out, 
that I think needs to be corrected about something I've said, then I need to do so publicly. And if I don't, it's not other people's responsibility to come to me in DMs to get that sorted out. Um, specifically, Dash X had asked uh, why were EKC and Tina so angry and aggressive arguing for this situation, especially if I'm to understand they aren't mods slash invested into the business. That was very strange to me. So I haven't I haven't seen it, so I'm not sure how aggressive they are or well, how angry if they that are. Is but... the case you you can be connected to a person and care about a person in like terms of business or friendship and want mm -hmm. to like defend them under certain circumstances and i think that's where they're coming from but it's like you have to if you actually care about that person and the person that they're dealing with you want to figure out like the full situation of how everyone spoke to each other and how things went across like i was thinking about what mr sirius said and yeah steve this is directed at steve but like I, I have, I'm not laboring under some delusion that he's going to be watching this because he already said he's disconnected from all of this at a bad time after just releasing that, um, mod call, by the way, or no, no, the, um, mediation. mediation call. Like, like you'd think, I don't know. I would think that he would want to like pay attention for at least like a day or two to the thing he released. But, um, I don't despise Steve. I just think he needs to take the advice from tons of people who are probably telling him that when things are happening involving business he needs to be clear and communicate precisely what he means because he can say he's listening and i've i've seen him say that before that he listens and i think he does he hears the words but he does not connect meaning sometimes between people there's like a disconnect that happens at times and that destroys stuff because what someone actually means and what you think they mean you can't just assume that you know what they mean especially stating that you know what they mean i know he knows that's not a good thing to do and would admit admit as much um to answer also ice queen's question a little bit further i think the biggest uh thing i think is probably at least in my mind is that i if this is the way he negotiates i don't think that he actually tried to i no longer believe i should say that he actually tried to negotiate with Kyle to fix anything, despite what he had said. It just seemed like he wanted to Brit to cause a breakdown. Mm -hmm. Is it, that's my impression after watching that video t today? Um, I, it just seemed like it just broke apart near the middle to the end of it, and he was just pushing like, "Okay, I want extrication now," and I'm like, "Oh, that's very abrupt." But. Yeah. I thought yeah, it was and, weird and that he call. gave me, uh, he said, I want extrication. What I would call, I, I would say his behavior in the mediation call, which you guys can go and see for yourself. You don't have to have the same opinion of, as me, that that was a demand. He demanded extrication. That was the only way he would move forward. The negotiations yeah, were... discussing it. Yeah, sorry, negotiations sorry. were already over. And then when I got sent his draft proposal, it... It, it had said. nothing to do with extrication in it. Um, Digital Demonic Davros says, uh, when I heard a deep dive on Chesh, I had di a different idea. Dia. Meanwhile, I thought we had smarter people, yet I have met people, and the answer is nope. Uh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> 62 IQ. I don't know what you want from me. Uh, but sorry, go ahead. <laughs> and it's also like he kept telling you, Chesh, that you, like, and telling us, some of us who have jobs, you know, and MNCs that we don't know that he knows how business works and we kind of kept implying that we don't know how it works and and okay Steve if Shesh doesn't know how business works so have you been taking advantage of her lack of knowledge around this and making her work under false pretense which is it and, then and that came up during the mediation call and Steve dismissed it yeah. as being dishonest and I was yeah. like that's actually a fair question if, if you're dealing with someone that you've stated doesn't know business, you need to like bring them up to speed and make sure that they they know how you're talking. Yeah, every time somebody wants to try to like bridge the gaps by saying basically like stop missing the bridge or or basically like take this label of being a dishonest prick. Like because that's what you're that's what you are by missing these bridges that we're laying out in front of you. Every time that happens, he's like, you're the one being dishonest. Like when I said, either A, you're not listening, or B, you're gaslighting. He's like, you know, he immediately is like, oh, dude, don't do that. Like, don't bring that to me, because I'm 100% right. He wasn't listening. 
And the reason why he was, I mean, yeah, yeah you're right, Al. He, he hears you. But the thing is, yeah, you is can that hear, it, but you don't listen. When it goes into his ear, it goes into one ear and it somehow conflicts with what he knows because Steve knows all. He knows everything, which is something else I covered in the mod call. He knows everything. So when it goes into his e ear and it somehow conflicts with something he knows and it can't possibly be right because he knows everything, he just dismisses it. That can't be real. There was something that um, I'm not gonna lie to get a little bit of a giggle out uh, out of during the media uh, during the mod call, and it was when he said that it's not possible to have a 50-50. One person has to have more power than the other. And I was just oh like, and only because at the same time he was saying he had such a good understanding of business, and I was just like, what? <laughs> um, there, there are businesses me. that are structured. He's never like... worked with a partner. That tells there me he's never worked in a partnership. Sorry, go there, on, sorry. There are businesses that are structured like with a um, division of powers, sort of like the U.S. government. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you don't have you don't have to have that rigid like pyramidal like you know CEO COO. You don't have to do that. Um, that's not a, that's not that's not the the only way you can structure something. Yeah, um, atheist miracle for four ninety nine said, "Is there a clean slate for the trolls about?" Oh, sorry, I'm losing it. Um, are you now a troll too? According to Steve, how do you feel about Kyle? Do you feel uh, played by Steve? Um, uh, th there's a couple questions in there, so I'll try and go through them real quick. Is there a clean slate for the trolls? Uh, I, I mean, I wiped the. Uh, I I. I didn't clean my Twitter uh, block list, but the YouTube block list I did. Um, I think there's already been a handful that already got got booted. <laughs> um, I think the only one that I've booted though so far was a bot. Um, so there, I think there's some lines that some people have crossed that I don't think uh, I'm okay with outside of anything to do with Steve. Um, Am I now a troll too, according to Steve? I don't know. He thinks I'm blackmailing him, so uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, God. Can uh, we seriously. get to that soon? Oh, uh, sure. Um, how do I feel about Kyle? Um, he's still a domestic abusing douchebag. I don't <laughs> Um, I, and I yeah, still think, and, non -sympathy I, guys. and I still, I also still think that the way he handled the situation with Steve in its totality was terrible, and that he was still in the wrong for doing so. The exact same thing I told, I told Jimmy Snow. Jimmy, Jimmy Snow had said, "Well, what if you, what if I have this information that would make Kyle right?" And and I said, th "Then he's still handling it like garbage, and he's still a crummy person for handling it the way he's handling it." So that turn, it goes from it. To me, the no the first non sequitur blowout shifts from a Kyle's an asshole to everyone sucks here except Bool. Um, uh, how do uh, b b do you feel played by Steve? I guess that there's something about um, th this has come up a couple of times, and uh, one of them, if I remember correctly, there was a stream where it had come up that we were gonna get our agreement written up yada 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 and he said that yeah we're gonna be this that and the other thing and i had said i mean yeah and if we were not you screw yourself like i'm not <laughs> I, if if it if you screw me on this you've ruined yourself more than anything else and i i think that still kind of stands um so sorry you wanted to talk about blackmail jack well, I was just going to say, uh, you, from my perspective, uh, I think I've also been labeled a troll. Where we, a lot of us have been labeled trolls, and a lot of us have been blocked on uh, his his favorite platform, Twitter. Um, I, of course, was blocked like uh, about 12 hours after that mod call for <laughs> after writing him a severe, you know, serious letter about, you know, his responsibilities as owner of the channel, and he completely ignored it. Well, it was because um, you, it, he, so said he it was ignored because... my request to he ignored my request to return my GoFundMe money to just completely ignored it. No response. I had to go to GoFundMe to ask for refunds, and I'm still fighting them for it. So Jack yeah. did say he said that he booted you from that um, the Discord because you shared those images to Chesha's Discord, which is like 
ninety percent of the people that were even involved with that. I mean, I know that that does like break some kind of ethical line, but most of the people that were even discussing it were not like random people. It was people that were the mods. Exactly. I was sharing it with people who were in the mod call, and te- <clears throat> and because a lot of them had. So after that mod call, some people don't may not realize uh, after that mod call happened. There was about four or five people, four or four or five mods that just straight up left the Discord and said, "And you, and you could have been having that." Steve. Sorry, you could have been having that chat in any other like little, what what are they called in Discord? Like channels, top, topics. Yeah, you could have been having that in a public topic. Yeah, and that wouldn't have been a reason at that point. Yeah, so so a lot of the mods had left the dis uh, the, the the Discord entirely after that call. I stuck around to see if I could, like, maybe talk some sense into Steve. And he just kept turning it around. He kept obfuscating. He kept sp- moving the g- g- um, goalpost back. And then when I, I was, yes, I was sharing the whole conversation with people in Cheshire's Discord who happened to be the ones, the mods that had left. Yeah, it's um, not like it was DMs or something. Yeah, yeah. And and so, and 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 Steve because he didn't like what I was saying and because I was sharing it, he kicked me out, blocked me on Twitter as soon as I made my um, my, my statement about it. Um, but to, yeah, to go to the blackmail thing, um, what if someone is scared of being blackmailed, doesn't that imply they've got dirt on them that could be used for blackmail? Yeah, like what is so Steve so much scared about? I don't that know. He'll... Yeah, I don't know what Steve thinks I have what? on him that I think would be worth fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> especially like, with yeah. Reverend Ruin knowing about it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> like because he helped you craft that, and it's like maybe the context of this is the agreement that's going on, and not all of eternity. <laughs> Yeah, I, okay. So, Steve, in the mod call, Steve, he just got dissed off by us, by the mods, because we were like, what the fuck? And during the mediation call, he constantly trying to gaslight Shesh. Okay, so about the mediation call, the first mediation call, let me make this very, very clear. And if Steve McRae is listening, and if EKC and Tina are also listening, I... Nina says that Chris was very professional in her opinion. I don't know how many mediators she has sat down with. I have. Let's just say that. When you're doing data gathering and if you interview the involved parties before you get into mediation, you interview both parties. You just don't listen to one party and get into the mediation. Then you become the representation a re- representative of that party. I'm not saying Chris is at fault, but I think so. He took a misstep there. That's a fair assessment on my part. And please don't I, dish on Chris on that for that. But there was also a conflict of interest involved with Chris because he was involved with Steve professionally, you know, uh, through Steve's YouTube channel. I also, after hearing that moderation call today, feel like mm-hmm. something, I don't know what, should have been disclosed to me in the conversation I was having with Steve, from Steve to me, that if I was going to talk to Reds, there might be um an issue with that oh yeah Dude. i'm coming, oh, I'm coming yeah. to oh you're saying yeah. that I'm that because to uh, if i you see guys are... i'm gonna be taking oh, off Red, what did you want to say okay i think is that okay Shashi? any final words rev yeah victims ain't we all <laughs> no, there are victims and there are people with a victim complex, I think. You have no idea what I just quoted. Never mind. I'll talk to, all, to y'all later. Bye. Have a good night, Rev. Thanks, Thanks for joining us. Night. So, I- I'm coming to that. Hold on. Let's talk about profession, being professionals and, you know, and all that shit. Shut up, Manya. I'm, t- I'm talking now. Don't stop talking, Manya. If anyone hey. wanted to have a quick recap of the mod- of the um, mediation <laughs> call. Stop trolling us. So, yeah, that was also another thing. And also, so I'm talking about why... Um, and Chef didn't get a choice on the mediator. Steve decided that Chris was going to be the mediator, and Chef had to accept that. 
or else she was um, risking steam not coming to the table at all. So she didn't get a choice. You get a choice. You know, you agree on a mediator. That's how professionally things are done for people out there. So I um, was. And then you just hold on. Let me just finish this thought because I'm, I'll, I might get distracted. So and then and then during the call, it was quite evident that Chris's bias was showing. Because when I talked about Chef being paid regardless, as an independent contractor, regardless of how Steve makes the profits or not, he kind of said, well, that's wrong technically. I'm like, what the fuck do you mean by that? So, and then Steve trying to gaslight Chesh again and again, Chris never stepped in at all. The only thing he did was when Chesh said, okay, we should stop it right here and take a break, he, he, um, Steve pushed on, and Chris was ready to do that. But when Shesh repeated it, and I said, let's stop it here for and take a break, that's when he agreed to do it. That's not what a mediator does. When someone says stop, you stop. That's how it's done. So people all saying that Chris was a professional or Steve was being a professional, no, it wasn't a professional mediation. That's not how it's conducted. So, and also like people trying to blame me for escalating shit in that call. Fuck you, all of you. I was there as a supporter of Ashesh and I did my job. That's what I was there for. I wasn't part of the mediation per se. I wasn't there as a witness. And the way Steve brutally made Shesh reveal why involving Reds as a witness would be a conflict of interest. Shame on you, Steve, for that. Fucking shame on you, you abhorrent motherfucking human being. Can I say something real quick? When she, when she said, hold on, let me just finish this. When she said there's a conflict of interest with Reds, Steve knew the nature of it. He, would, he should have said, yes, there is. But because he was so butthurt, and he wanted Reds in there, dragging Reds when Reds is, does not want to be dragged in online conflict, doing a disservice to Reds also. He made Shesh reveal that personal conflict of interest. Fucking Steve, shame on you for that. Now I'm going to. Um, Go those of you out there who are like ADD, uh, you guys are going to love this stream. Um, I, I had something <laughs> I wanted to talk about the, um, the whole uh, blackmail thing. Uh, still in my head, and I really want to go back to that. But um, at the same time, uh, I want to preface that with the fact that um, I've, I have been, I'm kind of a professional uh, dick bag, and I don't mean that lightly. I have, uh, I grew up that way. I, I have lied my entire like youth. Like I got really good at lying. It was part of my, it was it was part of my like um, survival tactics that I learned how to survive in my family, how to lie and manipulate and stuff. And I don't do that stuff anymore, but I've learned how to do it very well. And I, um, I've gotten good at, uh, recognizing people who are like me. Like I see myself in people and I recognize when other people start taking, um, Oh, this is Mr. Serious, by the way. Um, people who start taking pages out of my book, the book, the pages that um, that I would have played, the things that I would have done, and the whole mentioning Reds thing. That was uh, Chesh kept mentioning that she wanted to make the thing public, and uh, Mr. Transparency Steve, he didn't want to make it public. He said making it public would quote unquote weaponize it. That's Mr. Transparency saying that. Mr. I'm transparent, so DM me so nobody will know what we're talking about. I'm transparent. That, that's him saying that. And he, he, he wanted a, a very like private thing of Chesh's to be lodged right in there. So, so yeah, make it public. Make it public now. Do it now. That's what he was doing. Because that's the, a, a douche... I thing to do i mean i would exactly... call that a bit of a misstep if he was trying to do that against me because i never actually cared about whether or not people knew about our relationship that was a reds thing and to be oh. to be ethical <laughs> in that case you'd, you'd have to 
you'd have to actually like remove that and then there would be the question of why the uh footage would be edited at, edit. the, at that point yeah oh yeah the way he accused tried to accuse Shesh and i of first uploading that and then implying that we might have edited it i'm like I like what that he accused he accused of us edit of editing it before he even checked to look to see if it was edited, I guess. Because it's clearly not. Um I'm just gonna grab the super oh. there's a couple of super chats real quick. I'm just gonna get to those. Yeah, because uh, they've been waiting. Um Ice Queen said, Has your opinion of other previous non sec hosts changed with the shared experience of Steve? Uh Kyle and Bull excluded. Um, not really, though I mean I I was always a little bit sympathetic towards the uh, stupid as hell argument about what is and is not an engineer. I thought everybody was stupid about that one. Um, but I'm not... I don't think that it was handled in any kind of appropriate manner. And I think that my issue was less to do with how they treated... St how they treated Steve was shitty on its own. But how they treated the non-sequitur show fans and the giant middle finger that they gave to them yeah that was a whole nother level is a they, different they betrayed their own they betrayed their own values right it's it's a different i think there's i would i would say that my issues regarding them are separate from my whatever issues there are with steve um atheist miracle also asked do you, i think uh do you think steve used the kj gofundme money to pay for the non sequitur show lawsuit where else did he pay fi uh, get 5k to pay for it uh, and then they stated that Chris was on Steve's side. Um, I don't know. Um, I'm not that privy to Steve's finances. Um, Maybe that's the blackmail information that you had on him. Oh, dun dun dun. I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. I, 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 I'm not like I'm not looking at the guy's bank account. I don't. I'm not. I'm not I'm not that well versed in his finances to be able to 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 say one way or the other. I did see Banya's screenshot of when she asked for a refund from GoFundMe saying that the money was already withdrawn and I thought that was weird because he hasn't filed anything so why why was he withdrawing the money at that point but I uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I was also surprised that the money was already out of that GoFundMe account when yeah the hip pocket service wasn't fun how so. <laughs> nerd angle asked yeah. how bomb is steve's apple bees i don't know i've never been i need to uh to finish what i was saying yes please go um ahead. yes when he was attacking uh manya for her tweet that was another thing that was a page right out of my douchebag book he was he saw it as a way to deflect and that's exactly what I would have done. I would have saw it as like a, a, a thank you. Thank you, goddess. You gave me something that I can point at and say, no, don't look at me. Look at that. Like, oh, woe is me. Manya did a thing. Uh, woe is me. You know, I, w I would have done the exact same thing. I would have been an absolute like scumbag. And and it, it doesn't mean anything like it, he what he's saying is absolute nonsense. But none of that means anything. As long as he just keeps saying it as if it's true, it, that that's all that matters. You, you have to actually look at these things objectively. A ask for uh, when he says something, ask for how is it that if you do that, he can't answer you. People here have done that. Al has done that. He has not gotten an answer. The, and and lastly, about what? what about uh, Manya's uh, tweet. Breaking the agreement. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Breaks um, the agreement. Yeah, I, I asked that. that... On the, I mean, he hasn't responded to it, but he said he's not responding anymore. So it's like, okay, <laughs> I don't know what I can do. I'll make, yeah, I'll make one thing very clear. In the mediation call, the agreement was at first for the to keep quiet for 48 hours about the mediation call for fuck's sake. And that was at the end of Nothing the call. Nothing else. And then, I mean, anybody at the end of the time. Yeah. After such a long friendship, to compare Manya to those clowns <laughs> uh, over, like, two little, like, things, like, mostly, like, you know, like, innocuous, that just because, I mean, as, um, do you think Mika would be okay saying what she said? I don't know if, um, you know, how she was confused about it. Oh, I mean, uh, probably, I mean... Well, Mika said that she was actually confused as to the nature of what Manya said. She thought Mika was talking about 
uh, or she, Mika thought Manu was, yeah, Mika thought Manu was talking about ch- like chess or something for a second. Oh yeah, you're talking yeah. about yeah, yeah. Like what happened? She 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 went <laughs> like, into a little bit of a panic and started messaging, being like, "Are Manya and Chesh fighting?" <laughs> oh no. Yeah, the total like literally like not what Steve thinks because he's he came in seeing that thing under different assumptions, and I said that I said only the people in the mod call would truly have the context of anything of what she was saying with that. How is that even revealing anything that happened in the call? It could, it could be related to stuff outside of it, before it, and it was during it, so. Yeah, and then he tried to use my se- second tweet where I said, I'll continue to support Shesh because I made that tweet because people were coming to me. Is it what is it about exactly? And then, Because so that was the one that, that was done after tweet. it, yeah. Yeah, and then the 48-hour moratorium was extended till the end of negotiations, So, but that was conveyed to me after I made that second tweet. So I was like, okay, I'll stop here. I won't say anything. And I've told people have come to me in um, private. I was like, this is all I can tell you this t- at this point. I gave Chris, uh, Chris's tweet. I gave um, Reverend's tweet. I, uh, and that's it. I was like, you've got to wait. And people were ready and willing to wait. And I was like, thank you for your, you know, for your um, patience on this part. And I'll just add on this, the whole prof- professionality thing. When... When Chris, when Steve asked Chef sarcastically, his voice was dripping with venomous sarcasm, and he asked, "Oh, Chef, would you like to tell um, Chris what's the personal p- conflict of interest with Reds?" Chris should have stopped Steve right there and then. He should have said, "Steve, stop it right there. I'll talk to Chef later, and I'll confirm whether it's a conflict of a personal conflict of interest or not." And that's another slip on Chris's part, I believe. He can he can disagree on this, um, and I don't want anyone to dish on him, but I think so. Maybe because he wasn't getting paid for it, so he just did what bare minimum he could. But that kind of get, made me think that there was a bias on Chris's part. He should have stopped Steve right there and then. And he didn't do that. So, yeah. Um, there's uh-huh. another super chat, um, Gretchen has asked off topic, but it affects some of my friends and Steve won't, uh, speak. What was Steve's deal with Roadhog? I have no idea. No idea. I told when that started going down and things started being a little bit weird and aggressive, I had mentioned to Steve that, hey, you should probably step off of this. This looks like it's not going to be like g- a good look in general, not condemning anybody because I don't know enough about the situation to know what's gone on because I specifically avoided it. I was like, I don't know what this is about and I have enough on my plate with what I'm dealing with. I don't know. Um, and then he decided to have Roadhog on because this was a long time ago that I said this. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, and I said, I... My, my, as soon as I found out he was going live with Roadhog, I responded with, are my warnings meaningless to you? <laughs> I, and I only gave to you. Steve a summary of what happened and the res- what's going on with Roadhog. The response oh. I got was, oh, trust me, I got this, don't worry about it. And I said, all right, fine, your problem, don't come to me about it. This is a you problem at this point. Steve can own that shit. I know that there was, I know some of the issues. So somebody is saying, yes, I do know about this. You came into the thread. Yeah, there was one or two threads that I saw. One was about an issue and a conversation about um, racism. One was a, an issue about, um, I think, doxing, I think. What I'm saying is, is that I don't know enough about the details to be able to, like, actually suss through and watch through everything. Um, so, like, I don't. I don't know enough to, like, have a... Like, I'm not doing a stream about it, if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> just, to, just to clarify. I know. And, I um, want to finally get to... So I don't know what um, agreement he has with Roadhog at all. If any. I want to fi- finally get to um, the blackmail. Ah, yes. Uh, Do you know what the blackmail is? All right, Does so, anybody know what the blackmail is? <laughs> so... Chesh made a an offer about what the money what uh, what she wanted what she expected and she was waiting for a counter offer and apparently the offer that she had made was is that that's what the blackmail was is that is that is that what we decided the blackmail was or was it something else 
Um, I think he say um one of the things that I think I saw him say recently on Facebook was that the amount of money combined with saying that I didn't agree with an it with to an NDA was somehow blackmail. So the, what what the blackmail is keeps changing. I I don't know. I yeah. can't I can't keep track of it. The the thing uh, that I think was um articulated was the combination of point one and point four of the thing that I I don't know the full extent of how that wasn't supposed to be shared, but <laughs> like it's clear that you didn't you know like that the two agreements were not supposed to be like floating around in the public, <laughs> but having the idea of the moratorium, including information shared, um, extending that to anything beyond the business agreement, it just seems. It just seems like terrible lack of charity. Yeah. Um, you could say that during the nego- negotiations, like, oh, I think that, that this number four is unfair and would apply to things that I don't think it should apply to. Just like, you know, we took issue with one and three of the draft that Steve, um, sure. you know, was working on apparently, but it was just a draft, but <laughs> brought it to a negotiation. It's like, yeah, clearly people can interpret things in vastly different ways, but to go around and mention like even just the belief that I believe this is like tantamount to like a crime. Like you, you should not be doing that to people. Oh, to catch everybody up to speed. We were sent or Chesh was sent. I say we, because <laughs> we all got to, we all got, all got to, to laugh at it together. Uh, Chesh was sent a, um, uh, a thing that was uh, apparently like worked on by Steve and Chris together. Um, that was basically, I guess, uh, what would be constituted as a counter offer, um, so to speak. And it was so like laughably, horrifyingly terrible. Like it was like, if, if anybody looked at that, they would really wonder, like, does this person understand even the basics of business? Do they yeah, want, I mean, do they for, want their, for their clarification? Person- Mania, yeah. I think Mania took, posted the whole documents of Steve's. No, it was Nikki. No, Nikki. Nikki, 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 Nikki right? Yeah, Nikki sorry. It, it came um, across to me as like that... a very early draft that like it was his wants, and it's like this should not have been proposed. This is this... something that nobody would That's agree ridiculous. to. This, this is something that would be rejected by most people. The thing Any is, sensible he... person oh. negotiating employment would reject that. The the thing is the thing is he called uh, correct if I'm wrong here uh, Cheshire, he called it a draft when it came out in public, yet that was what he sent to you right? Yeah, uh, yeah, it was presented yeah, to so me if... as his proposal, and then in uh in on Twitter he was saying, oh well, this was just a draft, and I didn't even write it. Yeah, it, 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 right under the bus there. Oh my god! So then, like, why are you even sending it to me at all? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's very business minded and he's very ethical and he knows how business works, but he can't write a decent proposal. He doesn't know what the word it veto looks like means. Crap. I, 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 I told you guys this before. My S and M contract it looks like a hundred times more professional than that, and it's not in no way legally binding. Ooh. That's a burden now. <laughs> oh, I mean, it's just ridiculous. And he was coming and he was doubling down on it. Like, well, not doubling down, but it was like, how can you send that to someone? And then when it gets made public, oh, I didn't actually mean that. I was like, you, you can't have it both ways, no. Steve. Oh, okay. But this is this is, um, this has been the running joke, and I call that I say joke in a very macabre way. Uh, <laughs> is he wants his cake? And eat it too. He wants to have his cake and eat it too. There's a uh, question uh, here about um, uh, Michael uh, Berman said, I was told that the blackmail was a demand for $50,000 or you would release his DMs. So <laughs> that's kind of bizarre. That, because yeah, that, my... was part, yeah that, that was part one was the mentioning of the 50000 and then part four on that um, yeah. you know, negotiation was Not that information... Again. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, it was number four was not signing the NDA, um, which Steve finally did put out the entirety of that document, which he did not have permission to do. So, um, anyway, 
uh, CJ asked, uh, what happened to Steve's face? Um, I don't know any different story than you guys do on that one. Sorry. Um, uh, as far as I know, he, he, yeah. he drank too much and ate shit on concrete. Um, <laughs> but, uh, just to finish off Michael's, uh, thing, my, my DMs have always been public. Uh, Steve knows this. And Steve has publicly agreed that if I ever released anything, he he knows this, and there is no problem with it. So I don't know why why suddenly that's a that's an issue. Um, but I don't know. I haven't released anything. <laughs> so if it was if it was blackmail, nothing has come out. And on top of that, if I, the, it just doesn't really make sense. Um, but there was no demand. The, 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 he's been presenting my uh, my counter proposal as a demand. That counter proposal, now that he's put it out there, even though he wasn't granted the permission to do that, um, the it's yeah, very. To be fair, you could it says the document demand. itself. I do not agree to share this. It's yeah. It's also is very specific about what is negotiable and what is not negotiable. The fifty k is not under non negotiable stuff. So. And he kept he offered you a very measly number, isn't it, in this counter proposal when you said, Okay, we'll negotiate that amount. Well he offered to give me offered... money that he gets when he gets it back from Kyle after he sent it to Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> so and also like it'll be, talking it'll be... about being professional, ethical and moral. So Steve's contract or whatever fucking proposal, draft proposal it was, had no uh, there was a, um, I think so, a, a, a line in there which kind of said, oh, we are not going to discuss this contract with anyone. But Chef rejected that contract in entirety when she made her counter proposal. But Chef's counter proposal had a moratorium that protected it even outside that proposal. It wasn't a and moratorium, Steve, yesterday, but yeah. Kind of. I think so. It was a clause that protected the document from being public without your Correct. permission, explicit permission. And Steve broke that and started sharing it in private DMs with other people. And finally released it yesterday before going, okay, I'm done. As if it was some sort of mic drop movement, a more like moment for him and has shut down anything of communication. Um, so, so for someone who says he's very business-minded, ethical, moral, this comes across as very skeezy, let's just say. Oof. Um, Rez, we haven't heard much from you. Um, do you got anything before I start going, yes. start diving into questions too too far? Sorry, I've been thinking of whether I'm in chat. I've been trying to keep on top of things. Um, oh. I mean, I'm mostly here for moral support, but. Um, I think a lot of people here have already echoed a lot of my own thoughts about the situation. Um, yeah, um, there is one thing I want to say, though. I know there are some people here that feel like because Steve did the wrong thing, suddenly a bunch of other fuckwits are now vindicated. Uh, that's not how this shit works. Uh, there are some people who will not I will not name verbally, for obvious reasons, but... I'll, other than that, they just don't fucking deserve to have their name come out my mouth. And the fact is, those people, irrespective of this whole shit with Steve or Chesh, if neither of those two people were in the picture at all, those people would still be cunts. Those people will always be cunts. They have always been cunts. And they will be cunts that will not be welcome here. They can fuck off. And that's the end of it. I can yeah. cut. And, and to add an addendum to that, um, any of those so uh, aforementioned cunts who will, well, who will not be named, um, one of which, you, I've, a few of which I have already seen, Come in and say, I told you so, can fuck up. Seriously, just fuck up. It's a matter of compartmentalization. Uh, having an yeah. issue with Steve or Steve fucking up in one regard does not suddenly... <laughs> it's it's not an enemy of my enemy is my friend, necessarily. A lot of the... A lot of... 
these sorts Katie of situations. Katie Joy doesn't suddenly become right about everything. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, a broken clock is a broken clock is right twice a day. It's still fucking useless. Right. I I don't know. I I don't like that adage very much. I think it's still wrong because it doesn't actually know what time it is. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's like it's like somebody who who tells the weather by peeing in their own mouth. And they get the weather right once. They are never right. They are just, you know, they're they 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 guessed. They guessed. All right. Good. I have a, I have a better adage. You throw mm. enough shit at a wall, eventually some of it will stick. That's true. Um, I, I think so. Steve was trying to do that with me and Chesh also. <laughs> um. All right. So I'm going to go through a couple of these questions. Um. I don't uh, think they're all. I, oh yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Can I just one thing? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Your answer for a CJ, I want to clarify one thing. Mm -hmm. Steve's story, uh, or I don't know, the, I'm not going to say, not going to say what I think. You're but... talking about uh, uh, CJ's question was about how did Steve hit it, hurt his head? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the 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 fact that he uh, fell and ate shit on concrete. That's the story that Steve's telling. So, like. That's the one. That's the story that he wants everybody to believe. I'm just gonna throw and that out there. That's the reason he wouldn't go to the doctors, even though I tell him, told him to. We yeah. all it could told be, him to. It could be true, but also, it could be true, but it might not be like mutually exclusive with something else causing him to fall. I don't know. You know <laughs> what I mean? The fact that this is yeah. even in question at this point is so bizarre. Um. I do want to say a special yeah. hello to Nikki. Hi, Nikki. Hi, Nikki. Nicole. Hi, say hi, everyone. Long time no see, girl. Hi, yeah, we haven't seen her around in a long time. Um, I don't know who that is. Uh, Nikki is Nicole Davis. She was uh, on that time of the month. Oh, of course. Yep. Um, okay. So I'm going to go through these uh, top to bottom still for free to ask questions. I will do my best to try. I, I haven't caught all of the questions because there is a lot, um, but I've done my best to not also try to avoid grabbing um, uh, uh, duplicates. Um, so as we go, I'll probably be able to nail some of these off. Um, somebody asked about Kano. Um, I'm not sure. I haven't heard from her at all about any of this. Um, and as far as I know... She is currently the only mod Steve has left. Um, okay. No, there are a couple of more mods. Oh, I've are there? Seen... Yeah, there are. Are there now? Mods. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, I stand. Mods. I, I, don't know. I stand corrected or whatever. Anyway, um, Angry Roachhead asked, "How much did Steve want to pay you?" Um, probably nothing <laughs> for how much he wanted to pay me. How much he offered me was he offered me two separate things. The, at first, he offered to pay me for January and December um, at 50% of the profit after I paid for his taxes for some reason. Um, and, but the, and when he got that money. And the reason that caveat of when he got that money is in there is because I know for sure for December, I'm not 100% sure about January, he sent that money to Kyle. So, and Kyle has no obligation to give that money back. So he would have paid me essentially, eventually, maybe something if he was able to get it from Kyle was his first offer. Um, the second offer was $1,000. Oh, um, oh my God. Mm -hmm. so Which like... five years worth of work. Okay. Wow. It's like, I can understand that he's trying to like make a number up based on the time that you were physically working on the show, but it's, but I don't, um, I can't remember if I've said this to him. I think I might have, but I might not have, um, about how it's like, if you want someone to, or, and other people to like actually respect the number that you've shown using like demonstrable things, you need to actually have Chesh there, like being like, okay, this is accounting for all the things that I think should be accounted for. And, I, d I don't think there's any concern about, you know, like, what 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 would the concern be? Like, you don't, you just don't want to interact with this person for, because you're emotional or something? Like, what is the reason? Uh, one of the things I should also specify is that at first he wasn't really giving me anything and had just said, well, come back to me with a real number. 
like this number is yeah, unreasonable. He, come back to me with a with... come back to me with a reasonable number. And of course, my yeah, response was, think... "You tell me what a reasonable number is, then." Yeah, if you had sat down with him, and then he had put that tweet out like Chesh has been paid in full and Chesh agrees, I'd be like, "That's cool, that's awesome." Yeah, that tweet. You know, and and it'd be like, and if you were like, we we, what's the word? We agree to disagree about you know um the other stuff like like the hypothetical that you know if he was treating you as an independent contractor like the consequences of that mm -hmm. that he'd have that th there are ramifications for that mm -hmm. but even to say that it was just about the money about physically being on the show it's like yeah people would want Chesh to be like verifying that I thought that, it that was is a normal. I thought it was kind of weird that at the end of the mod call, he's like, I just want to be clear with everybody, this isn't about money. And now later, he's like, this is all about money. And I'm like, I don't understand what's happening. Also, yeah, that it, tweet, like, bad. oh, Shesh has been paid in full, and it has been verified by third party auditing. I was like, was the third party again? Did she, and Chesh was like, did I agree to that third party? I still don't when know did who I that, agree to that third party? I still don't know who the third party is, even in the first place. And, and I person. still yeah. haven't been sent any anything that would account for That's like any kind up. of <laughs> So remember when Steve was like, Kyle, you can't just give me money, I need to see the books. I'm sitting here, Steve, you can't just give me money, you need to I need to see the books. The fact that I didn't I did not know that you and Reds had been in any I like I thought that like you and Reds being in a relationship thing was like a joke actually. Mm -hmm. I thought it was like a lol. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, like, yeah, it kind of was. <laughs> um, and if, like, like and if someone Steve, wants if, to, if, if, if Steve was like the 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 person who I like the third party who checked the money has a similar conflict of interest or anything like that with you, <laughs> that would be messed up. <laughs> I mean, for all I know, he is the third party that went and looked in at numbers. <laughs> I don't know. Well, it's messed no, up he, he no matter share, what. He, he did share with me who it is. Oh right, right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Um, well, I mean, you don't you don't have to share here who it is. I mean, because regardless, it's messed up that regardless of who. Yeah, I don't. I have... don't know. I don't know the relationships between everyone, all of these people. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he could have like a, a town's worth of of parties confirming it, but it the fact of the matter is is that we have a we have people deciding for Chesh that she's been fully compensated. Yeah, if, if it was a third yeah. party with Chesh there, like Chesh and I sat down again and talked with this third party and we reached a number for either a partial payout or anything you know that at least you could agree to something with this third party there that you both agreed was impartial to the best of their ability that's something people would actually be a hundred percent okay with at least i think I just don't understand. Like, the thing that's bizarre to me is that everything got weird with Steve as soon as money came in with the channel, and money didn't even go to him. And I just don't understand why, it, like, everything got so weird. Um, okay. Kyle, stole, stole like... more, <laughs> Kyle stole, stole more money from him on accident because he sent it to Kyle. At, well, like, in, that, in that case, Kyle did not steal <laughs> that money at all. No, he Steve accidentally gave it gave to it him. To him. <laughs> Um, Accidentally, it, it's, it's like, what the hell? Absolutely, you fought for this thing. No, through, no, I, not even accidentally. Through laziness, pure laziness is what it was. Mm. The man I who was, is so business-minded. Like um, Hans asked a few questions, so we're gonna have uh, them coming up a few times. It's, uh, what do I think of people in the past that have fallen out with Steve? Now that you're in this group, do you think differently of people now? I think we kind of covered that a little bit already. Um. Do you regret any of the things you've said about people in support of Steve over the years? No. <laughs> I don't think so. I, don't... I think that person has it backward. I think that uh, because, like, when so many of your, like, mods that you're working on a project with leave you, it's it's not that you've left them. It's that they've left you. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm not really sure, like... Li the thing is, is, like, the issues I have with people are distinct from my relationship with Steve. It's, it, it's not, objective. right, it's, these people are attacking me because of my relationship with Steve, mm -hmm. and so, therefore, now I have my own reasons for these people, for me not to get along with these people, outside yeah, of my individual. relationship with Steve. Right, exactly. Um... 
What yeah, is these Steve... people don't suddenly become friendly because you're not friends with Steve anymore. The shit they said to you and me oh, and smart. other people in I'll India. I'll put it this way. I valid. am perfectly comfortable. I have no beef with them. If they want to, like, leave me alone, I'm not going to go after them. Like, and if they want to do whatever, it's fine. Like, I'm not going to sit around and I'm not, it's not, I was doing PR for Steve. That is no longer my job. So if they're going after Steve, I will not be there. So I'm not going to be stopping you. And whatever conclusions you draw from this are not mine to correct. So basically, yeah, no. I've washed my hands of the situation, and if you want to leave me alone, that's fine. And if you want to ask me a reasonable question, I'm pretty amicable in general. And I won't yeah. be stopping you either. And some trolls have actually DM'd me, not trolls, but people who I consider trolls, I don't really, I'm, I'm out, I'm out of it. Like, I've never blocked anybody this whole time. So my DMs are open. If you want to talk to me on friendly terms, I don't give a crap. My DMs are always open to anybody. That's how I've always been. Um, I'm not going to berate anybody who talks to Steve in any kind of way. I'm, I'm, he's his own thing. There's better ways they, to do what you were doing, and the reason you haven't been successful is because of your approach. I would just could you suck at it. Give you well, some advice, <laughs> friendly advice. Well, I mean, I, I loved the way I did things, but I'm not. I don't really feel like I like I don't want to do it anymore. Like I was doing it for Steve. I was doing it for him. And I was doing it for Cheshire and the Nonsec channel. Well, yeah, I was uh, doing it for Nonsec. I believed in the channel as a yeah. as an end as a thing. I think I mentioned um, this on, it on drunk a belief in a person. Yeah. I think I mentioned it wasn't, this. It was net for me. It was never about Steve. It was about how much everyone loved the non-sec back in the day how much it, with the community it created the the discussions it fostered everything that happened for due to the original run of the non-sec that is why i stuck with steve and a lot of things i didn't agree with i mean i, I, I had so many disagreements with him on all sorts of things uh, but i stuck with it because i believed in the non-sec the th and now it's all gone up in smoke. My, the position I was in was that, and I think I explained this on Drunken Peasants, you can't have a show that relies on good faith and neutral conversation about any kind of topic if you have a shit reputation. If your reputation is garbage, you have no show. Simple as that. Because why would anybody want to talk to you? And if nobody can trust you, yada, 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 yada. Um, okay, uh, uh, Kam uh, Kamala, hopefully I pronounced your name correctly, uh, how am I, uh, Chesh, how are you doing? This has been hard to watch, I can't imagine how you feel, hugs. Um, I'm a, this is the last thing I should be, a I should be doing on this, so once this is off my plate, I think most of the stress will be no, no longer an issue. Um, I'm Okay. <laughs> None of this is fine, but I'm managing. Uh, Nerd Angle go asked... Go back to playing Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, go back to playing Minecraft and getting blown up by creepers. Woo! Uh, I actually need to know, are you aware of the relevance between the term meeting of the minds he and uh, Chris kept using? I'm not sure what you're referring to. Um, so he in, the mod, he in the mod call, he kept saying, oh, so there's no meeting of the minds mm -hmm. between the usage. Yeah, uh, well, that's what I yeah. mean. Like, I'm not sure what, what nerd angle means by the word relevance. So um, he I was inserting some terms in there to um, mm -hmm. legally relieve him of some himself of some responsibilities later or, or um, put in there to in his favor for plausible deniability in future. That's what I think it was. There's absolutely- I think it, all it was is the difference between people coming together to actually like discuss something and hash out ideas versus people coming to a resolution on those ideas. And I think he was using it in the second sense of people. When he says meeting of the minds, he means that the, that the so people was... in the conversation agree. Yeah. In yeah. my in my personal opinion, he was specifically using it for legal terms. 
I think there's also so like a degree. About in future. I think there's also like a degree of so something that I, I haven't really talked about too too much is how much Steve was not talking to me as so, almost as soon as the show gave back with after that first month. So like after December, about meh, maybe mid January, he would say he would get back to me or we talk at the end of a show and he would just take off. And so, like, I, oh, how do I have a meeting? All of us. How do I have a meeting of the minds when <laughs> you're avoiding me? Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, do you believe that Steve really set up the NSS as a partner with Kyle? I mean, I think that they were supposed to be fifty-fifty based on what Kyle said. So I don't really need Steve for that. Um, yeah, Kyle, Kyle said they were fifty-fifty. <laughs> But there's, like, I, I mean, I would think that it's reasonable and fair of people to start questioning further some of the details that Steve put forward, but Kyle certainly, throughout that situation, did nothing to help himself. Um, Janie the Terrible, um, has Reds made a deal to restrict what you say about NSS or about Steve's wrongdoings apart from the NSS? Um, I haven't spoken to Reds in months, uh, so I have no idea. Um, if if Reds has made any kind of deal with Steve or anything like that, I don't know. Like, I, I haven't spoken to Reds in months, so. Uh, if he's made a deal, it hasn't been with me. Um, Hans asked, does Ruhif still talk with Steve? As far as I know, Steve and Ruhif have not had any contact in quite some time. That's as far as I know, though. Um, Hans has... Uh, also asked, in the two months of NSS, were you doing 95% of the work? Uh, I think that's a question for you yes. guys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the way Steve tried to sabotage Shesh, it came out on the screen, and we were noticing it. Steve I thinks mean, that we are stupid, we are not stupid. I mean, just to paint a small picture for you guys, I, I distinctly remember, I mean, we were just... We were just hanging out in Cheshire's Discord. We were talk chatting shit as we just tend to do. Um, <laughs> Cheshire was making a thumbnail, and she oh and Steve had Steve had no idea what this thumbnail was supposed to look like. So Chesh made like four or five thumbnails over the course of about two hours. And if that's not, um, you know, dedication and time and effort, then and you know how much did you charge? How much do you charge for thumbnails, Chesh? When you know when people know what they want, like twenty bucks. <laughs> yeah, you made like six thumbnails for that, and he was like, "Oh no, change this. Oh no, this is bad. Oh no, this is better." Like I'm throwing shit at you last minute, like when you're trying to work remix and shit. And that's what I told him, like in the mod call when he asked for feedback. I was like, "You have to make it a win-win for both of you." So if I were working with someone on a channel and on a show, I would be there every day. I would be like, "What do you want from me? What do you want from me? Do we need to sit down and talk on a video call? What do you want?" That from was me? one of the that's things. That's how people would do. That's one of the things that came up when we were talking about like contracts, or if I'm an employee or a contractor, or however you want to put it. He's hiring me under some oh. whatever. I was like, "I want a job description because like there was." One one point where I was doing live chat, doing the production, doing all of the things involved in the production, doing the setup ahead of time, scheduling the streams, writing the descriptions, doing the... Tw I was talking to myself on the Twitter. <laughs> that was that was fun. Yeah. Um, Steve managing was, the I mean, Twitter that Steve refused to manage. Setting up and didn't... working yeah. on the Discord, um, talking with the mods to make sure everybody was on the same page. Um, and the, I, as, it got to the point where the mods were coming to me asking if I was okay and if I needed help with anything because I was doing, it seemed like I was doing a lot. And so if stuff like that starts coming out onto this, onto the stream, you know, there's, you know, there's trouble. Oh yeah. And, um. And when we gave we gave objective feedback to Steve, and he tried to direct it towards Shesh. Oh, I asked for an email. She wouldn't give it to me. Bitch, what did you do to make sure she gave it to you? Did you pursue her? Did you pursue her enough? Or was there another story there? Well, he I mean, was too busy. He was too busy going out and filming dates he's on. Uh, well, there is yeah. that, but which 
I will reiterate, I said at the time and I'll say again, creepy. This is yeah, the guy. That, you shouldn't do that. When a woman is intoxicated, you don't record her. Like, it's about consent. Steve um, should know better. This yeah, sorry, it's not Mr. Serious. Let's let's go back to what you're saying. This is the guy who wants to run an entire channel with all the decisions are being made by him. Uh, so every entire time he has like an excuse where he tries to put like obfuscate his uh, his responsibilities. Those are actually his fault. If he wants... if sorry. if Chesh didn't give him an email, that's his fault. If if something happened and some somehow something didn't line up. And he didn't like, he, like, and, and did some, somehow communication was broken. His fault. He has to take up responsibility because he's the head honcho. That's what he wanted. That's what. That's the way he's envisioning the channel. That Chesh has no responsibilities and he has all of it. And if he has, if he gets all the responsibility, if he's like the the guy on the line and the guy who has the last call, that means he also gets all the blame. That's how it yeah. works. If anybody, if I noticed anything in that mod call, especially when I rewatched chunks of it for uh, Drunken Peasants, I don't think I have ever seen somebody claim to have all of the responsibility and all the risk while taking none of it. Yeah. Steve reminds me, well, this, uh, th this whole situation reminds me of my experiences with dealing with, like, agencies you know, housing agencies and work agencies. There's people in the office where they don't really do any work. They just sit there and, you know, they want to sit in the office and collect their checks for, you know, having, um, you know, for, send for, for setting up the contracts for other people to go and do the work. They want to sit in their office. They don't want to do their jobs. They, they, and this is what Steve wanted to do. He, he, wanted, to, he wanted everyone to do the work for him but because he owns the agency, like, everyone else has to do the work for him, and he just collects the money. Well, he was entitled well, to all the help. Paid for it? I don't yeah. think it was clear, um, even though he wanted saying. to talk about it during the mod call, I don't think it was clear. Um, at least I don't remember. And I've listened to it again. I don't think it was clear that he said... That Kyle, that the money that was that five thousand was going to be paid by Kyle, but in the moderation, he was very clear about it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and that's and what like, my issue was. Huh? And I was being told, yeah, and I was being told that um, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm like, bitch, you're getting that money paid back from Kyle, aren't you? Well, so why the fuck Shesh is going to pay for it? The three as part of like channel expenses, quote unquote. The re the three things wow. my takeaway was is that Steve wanted to pay me an exposure or say I was paid an exposure he wanted me to pay for Kyle's debts and he wanted me to pay his taxes <laughs> those are my three takeaways from all the conversations I had yeah because even yeah. even without a buy-in the point is that even without a buy-in by you agreeing um, by him making that unilateral decision to use the 5000 as a channel debt, that is you taking on that $2,500. Which I said yep. I wouldn't have had really any problem with. Yeah. But if you put it, how, Until I didn't trust him like, anymore. I mean, that's him... That That is him being like, okay, my partner is agreeing that I don't have to give them the money as a partner for X amount of time. Because I had to incur this cost in a legal cost at the end of this to acquire this property. I just, I, I don't know. It's just bizarre. Um, every time, every time Chess uses explanation, Steve hurts himself in confusion. Uh, b -b 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 -b. And also Chris needs to tell you taxes are hard. <laughs> yeah. Taxes are hard. It was, uh, yeah, uh, taxes are hard. I'm like... Okay, go on, Chester. T, uh, T Spiracy, I, I mean, I, I don't know how much. Well, I'll bring that up later. Remind me to bring something up about the the absolute irony of non sequitur, where opinions are sacred. Had comments turned off. Um, T Spiracy uh, asked. Well, opinions me, aren't sacred anymore. It's it's only uh, expert opinions. Informed. Or whatever. And opinions <laughs> are like opinions are sacred, but only the ones I agree with. 
Um, I mean, and there there is something behind that. Like, you know, we do trust experts more often, but it's like, why are you changing it after so long? I, I don't yeah, understand. Yeah, that didn't make any sense to me. Um, okay, T-Spiracy asked me and Manya, uh, do you think the mediator was biased being Steve's friend at all? Do you want to go first? I think he didn't do his job properly. I, 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 because being biased is assigning intent, I can't do that on Trisha's behalf. But I, but I well, think that... There, the you don't actually that have to do that. There, there is, there is like biases that we can't actually address in ourselves. Um, and yeah, but there I could, don't. I, I'm giving him okay. charity. I'm not going to even do that. I'm not going to even. Yeah, do that. like I'm natural biases. Natural biases can make you blind to the decisions you're making, even when you think yeah. that you're um, making a decision that's neutral. You can still be biased in it, just like how groupthink yeah. works. You're like, yeah, this is the correct answer, blah blah blah. And it's like, no, you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, you're horribly, and horribly I, wrong. Yeah, there's. It's... I I think on, sorry, that, yeah. um, I. I think that Rev said it best at the beginning when he kind of went over it to say that, um. Chris would have had just the fact that Chris worked on a show and was paid by Steve in the past to work on that show was a conflict of interest and I also yes. think that if if the if this wanted to be handled amicably and wanted to actually have an agreement come to it could have happened and it didn't because somebody wasn't taking it seriously somebody wasn't acting in good faith and somebody didn't want it to be so I I I was uncomfortable within the first two minutes of that mediation call. Um, and I'll put it that way. Um, I'm sure people will pick it apart, as people do. Um, I don't have anything against Chris personally. I think he accidentally walked into a pile of shit that he did not realize he was walking into, which is his, unfortunately, well, his own responsibility. Did he, did he did he ask before the um, moderation call for your side in, in private? Nope. Uh, the first thing I heard from him was well, that, getting that, the that, time. That is a massive mistake on his part. Yeah, that, yep. that's a massive uh, misstep as a moderator that's trying to be impartial. I, I think oh, that yeah, if a moderator, bad, if, if we wanted to have a, if Steve wanted to have a moderator that was impartial in a way that was going to be conducive to actually resolving the issue, then we would have found, then he would have worked with me to find somebody that we could agree on and not dictate. Yeah, that wasn't he dictated the, point. the moderator to you. Yeah. And he didn't give you a choice. He See, just that... pretended you had a choice. That's part of the of the thing. That's a page out of my book. Um, as soon as moderation came up, it was like a snap decision. Bam, Chris, Brent, Chris. I think That's the I guy. think it was also it was hastily made because Chris uh, apparently does have that background, and it's like, yeah, maybe if he does have that background, it still might not be the best decision. It's because the approach should have again being amicable and acting in good faith would say, hey. I think it would be good to get a moderator in. I think this person would be good. What do you think? And Chris still might have been the person who was decided upon, but yeah, just like that's with the way the, you would approach the money it. as well. It's the same thing with the money. I, I, that's something I vehemently disagree with. That I'll tell Steve straight to his face that that's not a good decision to do. That's not the ethical thing to do. Throw the dwarf makes an interesting point and says, to be fair, I think the negotiator should have been paid as uh, to uh, hold him to his professional standard. Uh, in the call, if I'm not mistaken, he said he was doing it pro bono and that um, I, I don't think... <laughs> I think it to to present yourself was... as a professional and then not hold yourself to that standard would be counterintuitive uh, to, especially to resolving a, a problem amicably. So uh, unless the goal was not to resolve things amicably, I don't know why Chris would do that. I'm not saying he did, by the way. I'm saying, like, I'm just in that situation. I'm not sure. And also, that's not the Steve way. Pay somebody for labor? What? No. <laughs> she got paid asshole. in exposure. Look how big her channel got. <laughs> I mean, hello. how many subscribers did you have before you started working with Chesh, uh, Steve Chesh? Oh, I don't know, like uh, a thousand or so. Chesh, has he... Chesh, has he taken down the thumbnails you worked for on the three episodes of the non-sec? 
Oh, I did more than, I don't think than so. three for non-sec for yeah. thumbnails, but, but no. But the ones that are on the YouTube channel at the moment for the li those live streams, have you taken them down? Not that I'm, I'm wondering. Not that I'm aware of, no. Um, I will ask Shesh, I'll ask you, Shesh, a question. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. <laughs> um, where did my question go? I had written it down. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, Jimmy Ma Jimmy B says something interesting. Steve nicked off with the AdSense. Kyle didn't get anything. You got played again, again. That's an interesting point. Uh, do we have any actual evidence besides Steve's word that he sent that money to Kyle? Yeah. That's a that's a. I don't. I can agree with that. I I don't have anything except Steve's word that he sent that money to Kyle by accident. Well, that would be something well... like when he said that you were paid in full. That he'd have to show that to you, your. To you and to someone else that is, uh, oh, who was that? Oh, Defer, hi. Hello. Hey. Hey. Um, my question to Shesh, um, Steve said, this is from his quote unquote fact sheet. Um, during the mediation, Shesh, I quit the show and she directly asked me on, on the date when that mediation call happened during the negotiation meeting to be removed from the channel and asked me to remove her name from a channel. And I agreed and said I would not use her art and subsequently removed timestamps of oh, okay it's it's about me in the end for fuck's sake let it be let it go let it go no questions go on dapper my bad fuck it's always coming down to me why no yeah, I mean, dapper, I'm... we'd love to hear from or hear what you've got to say I mean what I have to say is ultimately basically what I said in in the meetings I mean, you guys have heard me um I was trying very hard to be a, a nice, neutral, trying to be a calming presence. I don't think it helped. Um, I will say that uh, laughing at someone who's trying to express the idea that maybe their time is worth something is... Um, it sounds a whole lot like the person who's surprised to learn that their graphic artist wants to be paid and doesn't think that exposure for your shop sign is sufficient payment. Am um, I the no, asshole? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think no. it's I think it's ch choosing beggars. Oh my oh, god! Yes. I wish I do wish Steve would write an I am am I the asshole on this situation? Or am I the choosing beggars? I would I would I would genuinely love to hear his thought process about everything. I would also love to seems... see that comment section. <laughs> in another t in another universe. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look. I don't think it's difficult to understand the the idea that if someone is investing their time and effort into something that they're not going to have any ownership over. They or they're not going to have a valuation of that about? time. It wasn't any time at all. It was only two freaking years. Yeah, look, I don't, start, I don't have like Chesh's changing, time card or anything. Yeah. <laughs> so <clears throat> I'm not going to sit here and pretend I have a good idea as to exactly how much time over the course of those two years Cheshire worked. I... I don't know, right? Chesh, you can tell, you can give me a number, but like, I doubt you even kept track. So, like, whatever. A so, lot. I'm the sure. Fact, yeah, I mean, the fact of the matter, <clears throat> the fact of the matter is is that it was an investment of time, and it was a significant investment of time because we all saw, like, I mean, how many episodes of uh, like Caffeine Corner? How many? Out, can you give me a rough percentage of the number of shows you were on with Steve on his own channel over the past two years? A percentage of like his total number? No, I couldn't. Yeah, over I'd, the past I'd, two years, I'd have to actually look. It was all the answer was a lot, like a, yeah. a lot. <laughs> we were like seventy-five, eighty percent. Can I just go with a meme and say ninety-five? <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it was a lot. It was a lot. That is an acceptable answer. <laughs> It was a full-time job for you. Let's just quantify it in that means. Sure. It was a full-time job for you. Yeah. So I I don't think the idea of trying to calculate um, what a salary would be for a full-time job is, is a ridiculous thing. Now. It's very difficult. Look, are, are, you, are you likely going to be able to get that out of someone in this situation? No. And should you be able to be a bit flexible on it? Yeah, probably. So, but the idea that that was just ridiculous and was an investment um not not really acceptable no no that's why the whole no. point is of negotiating right that number was a starting number and not a demand well, I mean, letter would he um, have been happier you... 
you brought up caffeine corner and um i think lots of people in the mod call were surprised that you were only getting 25 percent yeah, there's a couple people surprised yeah. about that yeah yeah and um i'm sure that anybody in your situation even steve included if he was under the same um understanding of your guys's agreement that if you had known what steve meant by it you would not probably have settled for 25 percent Oh, so actually, the, okay, so the thing with Caffeine Corner is I specifically only took 25% to help Steve with his stress levels and income for Non Sequitur. Caffeine, oh. Corner, Caffeine Corner in its entirety was Non Sequitur show related. You cannot remove Caffeine Corner as its own entity. It was made specifically to be a holdover for Non Sequitur. And I took 25% knowingly, so that way Steve would be able to make more money, so that way he would have an easier time dealing with Kyle and the lawsuit and such. I took that money as a, it, as a favor. I, I personally... As they, I, as, as they say, Cheshire, no good deed goes unpunished. Well, I mean, I don't know, does that get an extra 25% of all the work of Caffeine Corner count as equity towards non sequitur show? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I if, it, if it likely increased ultimate viewership, then yeah, it's one of those things. Though, but how are you going to measure it? I don't know. Just, yeah, a, just a, an that, example. That is related to like intangible. Just, that is related so, to intangible. Just an aspect. example. Also, throw the dwarf says, um, "Grab dapper a drink." Um, <laughs> Roden, I see you popping in here. I do want to get your thoughts, but I need to ask you just to pop out for a minute until I yell at you, and you can come back in, or you can just mute yourself. That's fine too. Thank you. Um. As far as drinks goes, hey man, there's openings on my Patreon. You can go sign up for five bucks or something and get me a drink every once in a while. Um, hey, now I'm not, and now I'm not uh, like giving ten bucks a month or whatever to non sick. I can split that money between <laughs> both of you. Nice. Um, one thing I did want to say is, I wonder if Steve would have been happier if instead of doing any work on the show, Chesh had simply continued to do things like take commissions, and then gave him that money as a quote-unquote investment. My guess is that he would rather have had her working than doing that. Just just a guess. Cause, yeah, I think you're probably right. Yeah, with his whole complaint like, oh, this this wasn't any investment at all. It absolutely is, because your la people's labor is worth money. And also there's this thing called opportunity cost, right? It's a thing in economics. You're always losing out on whatever the next best thing you could be doing is right so if <clears throat> the next best thing you know instead of non sequitur was working on commissions well then chesh not only spent her time on that she also lost all the money that she would have made from commissions she didn't take as a result of working on the non sequitur show that needs to be acknowledged now like i said i'm not here to take a stance on exactly how much that should be I do think 200,000 is probably too much. I think 1,000 is way too little. You're right. Uh, Damper, I 100% agree with you. Yeah, but, but uh, 200K Steve... wasn't for commissions. That, I didn't even factor that no, into that. No, no, yeah. yeah. And it wasn't really a serious proposal. It was a, to emphasize how many different tasks you were taking on Correct. and why it is that that is valuable. Um, valuable. Although I have noticed that Steve seems to think that it was actually some kind of a demand for that yeah, much Steve... money. Steve, that, that fact list, Steve said that that was the, um, that you were not going to be amenable to negotiating down from that. Oh. Which I've he's heard still from getting, multiple times he's that you're like, still yeah. still getting the number wrong. That's still not the right number. <laughs> anyway, sorry, Mr. Sears, you go ahead. Uh, Steve, uh, is, is business minded. And since he can't be wrong, uh, Dapper must be wrong. So... Uh, Chesh, uh, her time is meaningless and worthless. So, if Steve were, if Steve were business minded, he would have set up a some corporation and he would have had a contract years ago. Which is something we discussed years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go figure. All right. Um, da -da -da, Jimmy... Rez wanted to say something, but oh, sorry. Us. Go ahead. Oh, maybe not. Uh, I actually forgot what I was going to say earlier. So don't worry about it. Blame it on my ADD, baby. <laughs> okay. All right, I, I have something I want to say real quick. Yeah, go for it. So we have uh, Steve channel, Steve's channel. He has another channel. He has the um, the Great Debate Community channel. And I'm just curious, uh, maybe I can take a poll in the chat. Uh, 
how many people out there were were really like excited for these last two plus years to get Steve Channel Three? Hold on, I'm writing the poll for you. All right, cool. Um, when was the last time we saw a video from the GDC? I don't even know. I was just enjoying hearing the crickets. Where are right, you? everybody in here sounded really excited. There we go. Boom, there you go, guys. There's a poll. I'm a nice guy. I remember when, when Non Sequitur was first um, going, people actually did Discord stuff constantly in the GDC um, and had interesting, like, what what's the word? Not extracurricular. Uh, like, peripheral conversations about stuff like like stuff beyond an after show was usually happening there like david mcginnis and other people and bull um and just a bunch of different random neat people would be in there just randomly talking about stuff but you need to like have a community of people that want to engage to do that <laughs> um Okay, so Jimmy B asked, uh, I have to ask, at any time during all of this where you tempted to scream at him, you're fucking stealing from me, Steve. Uh, yes, I was. <laughs> I was, uh, I was honestly hoping it would be just, like, a mirroring of that, that first, like, I was hoping at one point he would say, sue me, there, so sue me. There was one thing that I saw, somebody had posted a, a old tweet from Steve talking about how his daughter wasn't getting money because of Kyle's behavior and I said well I, I guess it's fine for me because I don't have a daughter and I only have a dog <laughs> and then someone said that he's taking money out of Puck's mouth or something yeah somebody said that <laughs> there's a couple memes and I'm I, I'm sad because I don't have a me so, so when Kyle did this shit to Steve, Steve had a me, and I started the meme train. And there have been plenty of memes, but nobody has actually started the meme train yet, and I'm kind of sad, because I'm, I'm all about that. So, I don't care if you don't like me, and if it's a meme against me, or if it's a meme for me, I'm just here for the meme train, so... Good times. I was going to collect all of the memes we posted on my Discord over the past couple, <laughs> uh, over the past like two weeks, and just put them in a Twitter thread. Oh God, do it! Tag me. Uh, That's the meme train. Non, meme train. Bit a bit of a non sequitur here, but if anyone ever is ever getting schooled by Steve about philosophy, you can check my latest tweet where he admits not being a philosopher. And so, if he tries to tell you what isn't isn't valid in philosophy, just Post that image to him. He's not a philosopher, so he he has no right to tell you what isn't is or isn't good philosophy. Uh, Porkchop asked, uh, "Do you get to take any of the work you did with you?" Um, so that's a question about copyright. So technically, I own the copyright for all of the artwork that I did. Um, so there's nothing really stopping me from using it, but I don't really have to take it with me because. Steve doesn't actually have any of it because I was doing all the producing. He doesn't actually really have very many good, like he doesn't have the assets. And even like a completed asset, he's the the versions and copies that he have are like pretty much low quality anyway. So, uh, he yeah, eh. <laughs> I I noticed he took off. Pretty, he started using Kyle's old iconography, and I can only assume that's because he thought that I was gonna copyright strike him. Um, Deadly asked, according to Steve, you have been paid. Is that true? Not asking numbers, just if paid or not. He, okay. He sent me an amount of money. I will put it that way. Unprompted. <laughs> An unprompted, unagreed upon amount of money. Uh, with very suspicious timing related to other things that were going on in the background. Uh, so... <laughs> I, I wouldn't call that getting paid, but I, he did send me an amount of money. And I think somebody asked uh, specifically about, uh, is Steve lying when he said he paid you $700? Uh, I think that number is not quite right, but he did send me an amount of money close to that. Without my consent. <laughs> For two years and of work, $700. 
two and declared that, that it was two point seven ball. Two point seven five years. Um, okay, just saying. Asked, uh, do you feel Chris's mediating was uh, fair or tilted in Steve's favor? There was a degree of it where I didn't understand why it seemed to me like we were catering to Steve's decision about how the agreement is or was even though I didn't really disagree with it. So I found it weird that I would describe the the agreement as I understood it, Steve would agree and then say something else. And we yeah. and and the 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 mediation seemed tilted to whatever that something else was. And so yeah, like you, I was would talk about the business as a whole and then he would be like, "Oh, you want to be an owner of the channel." And it's like, "No." No. So I I don't <laughs> and, understand it, and it seemed to be that like everything Steve was saying, no matter what it was, and no matter even if it was just straight up like attacks, or like missed like had nothing to do with anything, was taken seriously. But what I was saying was not taken seriously, or was generally just shut down. That's and, what it felt like. Yeah, yeah. and. For some reason, Steve's understanding about the agreement was taken taken as a priority over was what Shesh understood it as, even though it was clearly established that there was breakdown in communication. Well, so, even though it was like, established that we agreed, there's multiple times in both meetings where me and Steve are agreeing. I don't. I have no contention about what the agreement is because Steve and I both agree what the agreement is. Multiple times throughout both meetings, he agrees. And then starts going in another direction about something else entirely. So I I don't know. I have no contention with him having 100% of the channel. I never had any contention with that. I had no contention about him wanting to use the money in this direction. I never had any contention about that. I, I don't... I, I to Right now, I still have no idea what Steve was willing to negotiate on because I was never told or was never given anything that he was willing to negotiate on. Um, CJ asked, um, oh, what was the deal with Steve having an agreement with uh, Roadhog, I think? I don't, I don't know. Uh, Lola Flo um, asked, will Steve's reputation survive this? No. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> I think he I think his reputation is already pretty shot at this point. Yeah. And the thing was that what Shesh was talking if Shesh correct me if I'm wrong because I think so I did that in the mediation call so I would be like Shesh is this what you're saying and she would say yeah I agree and I was like yes yeah, this is what she's saying why can't you understand that. Um so Shesh's main thing is that being a 50% partner, she would be part of decision-making that would in include revenue, channel, Patreon, everything regarding the NSS as a business. Steve wanted to take that control away from her. Well, That's I mean, check out the poll. It seems to be polling pretty steady, and we're at 90 votes now. And this is something that I talked about uh, to Chesh and maybe some other people before. I said that um, when the channel came, if I was Steve, I mean, knowing what I'm like, some of my faults, like what I'm not good at, I would have been in a hurry to give over 50% of the responsibility to her because I knew what, for a fact that I couldn't handle it. Nobody wants another Steve channel and for good reason. Because the two that they got suck. Why the hell they want a third one? Um, there's a question from Angry Roach saying, do I believe that Steve used Bool as a shield? I'm not sure what you mean in that regard. Um, so I... Maybe if you can give me a little bit of elaboration or something specific that, that you're talking about. Um, maybe maybe he's talking about the mod call. Yeah, that's why I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure. So Yeah, that's the only time I remember him mentioning pool. Mm -hmm. Um I'd like, like to make a side quick side note here and say Bull would be disgusted with Steve's behavior right now. At least I think. I mean I don't know the guy as well as other people did in here. But 
I think that Bull would not be happy with what's happening right now. Um, Miss E. He would be very disappointed in the lack of communication. I, I'm pretty sure I don't say. Uh, Miss E asked, well, "Why uh, freak out over a hundred and twenty dollars when he sent you seven hundred? What the hell? I don't. I don't get it. I don't get it either." I understand. Um, if you look at the math about, or like get a rough estimation of the math between like the expenses, like, so if this amount of money, if this $120, $130 was supposed to go to channel expenses, right? And he wanted to skim off the leftover of that after the rest of the expenses until he got to $5,000, there would be a, it would only be like maybe five, ten maybe 20 an additional 20 dollars a month up until he reached five thousand dollars and it's like i don't understand why there's this huge blow up and blow out over twenty dollars i don't i don't i don't understand um anyway actually i think we've done really well we're just over the two hour mark right now um and i think that we got through most of the questions um is there well, I can answer your twenty dollar question. Oh yeah, go for it. Anything to deflect. Cause that's a page out of my book. Mm. Did you have you written this book down? Are you gonna I need to write yeah, I really need to actually write a book. Write this book down and sell it on Amazon. Um I did it's see Died to douchebags. I did see Rodent pop in here. I'm sure Rodent has something to something to say. You're muted, Rodent, in case you're not sure. My phone was away from my hand as well. Uh... Uh, um, I'm not sure what to say. Uh, I went through most of the mod call, and it was just a cacophony of misunderstandings on, like, on, on many sides and, and many subjects. I have a hard time calling it a misunderstanding at this point, personally. It's, uh, I, I call it willful ignorance. I mean, uh, on host, Steve's part. I think, host, I think, uh, I think uh, one of the reasons he brought so many mods into the call is because he expected the mods to side with him. And then it, I don't think he quite realized how many of the mods in there were had been like friends with Cheshire for so you know and and the reason we were there is because we were friends with Cheshire and because we believed not Steve but the NSS in general and that's his mistake well that was one of his mistakes yeah I find it interesting that after cultivating a community of critical thinkers he suddenly he's suddenly surprised that when he was pulling bullshit, we called him on it. I, I mean, he said that, and, and, well, not just him, but I think everybody has said at some point that if the roles were reversed, it had nothing to do with that it was Steve or it was Kyle. It had to do with the behavior. So, exactly. Like, go ahead. If, if Steve had been, if Steve and Kyle's roles were reversed, I would have been on Kyle's side. Mm -hmm. yeah. If all that was changed were the roles, I would be on Kyle's side. I agree. So would I. Even though I didn't even really like Kyle to begin with, I I still would have been that. Nah, fuck Steve. He's in the wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, just two things. Uh, Paul uh, gave a super chat to send to get me a nice bottle of wine. Uh, all right, I will. I will do that. I'm gonna need it. Uh, Rose also sent some hearts. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I am a. I'm a very busy bee, and um, I'm doing a bunch of commission work to kind of help stabilize myself a little bit while I figure out what's going on and uh, do whatever I need to do. You know, get my bills paid and all that good stuff. Um, I do. Wait, have... Are you supposed to pay those? Allegedly, yeah. Um, I do have a couple of projects on the back burner, so, um, keep an eye out, um, for some stuff coming down the line, but, uh, I don't want to give too, too much away yet because some of that stuff is what you might call still in negotiation. 
Whoa. Um, please, I, please tell me there's a written contract that's gonna be coming. I can't leave that up to like. I'm gonna say if that happens, I'm just gonna slap it publicly so everybody knows exactly what it is. Like you know what Steve had initially said. Um, Rodent, I think you weren't done what you were saying though. No, that's about it. I, I think there was just a lot of mm -hmm. talking past each other on on both sides. Oh, fair enough. I don't agree, but I think that's a fair assessment. Also, uh, make sure that you don't not only get it in writing, get it translated to Sanskrit, and then have someone perform it as interpretive dance. I'll get it launched. Just to make sure. Get, it, get it chiseled into stone. And then I'll launch it into space where it can't be touched. <laughs> I doth bring the, the golden disc. Uh, Sorry, Wes, what did you say? I said I doth bring the Ten Commandments. <laughs> Alright, I think that's about everything. I think we've got all the questions. Does anybody have any last words and then we'll get on out of here? I think the uh, number one word I would say to def like define Steve's overall like missteps is that he has been extremely uh, negligent negligent to his channel to his friends to the community to everything so and i think it's not going to stop and i don't know what ekc is doing like i i'm not going to say like she's backing the wrong horse but what i am going to say is is that if she didn't get money from steve she's an idiot doing any labor for him without getting money is a stupid stupid move don't do it Get money up front. Don't do shit for him till you get the money because he will not respect a thing you do for him. He doesn't care. It doesn't matter if you're his best friend or even if you're probably his mother. He doesn't care. If you do anything for him, he's entitled to it. Get the money up front. Anyone else? Yeah, fair enough. Um... Yeah, that was that was Mr. Serious. Any who who wants to go next? Last words and then get get out of here. My last for my final word is identification, which is a word that came up on random word generator. Hi. Well. <laughs> I guess my final words will are going to be um uh, beware of a sig beware of the signaling paradox, and this is a lesson that people can take to take home with them. Um, it is always the liar who tells you they always tell the truth. It is always a thief who tells you they do not steal, and it al is always someone who claims to be ethical. It tends to be the least ethical amongst us. So yes, beware the signaling paradox, and uh, Steve. Fuck you, buddy. Good night. Wrong move, buddy. <laughs> Wrong move, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I'm not your guy. I'm not your buddy. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, yeah. Mani, you want to go? We'll just wrap it up with our last words. Oh, are we at our last words? Yeah, I had... Um, I saw a side of Steve that I never expected to see, but then I saw, and I was getting hints of it um, before we went into that mod call. And I was kind of surprised that he dragged us in and then he wanted everything to be hush-hush and private as soon as it imploded in his face. The way he dishonestly tried to change the deal and, um, and continue to doubling down. And then he attacked me as if attacking me would give him some sort of cred credibility. Um, absolutely nonsense and the cruel way in which he guided the mediation call and I think so in some way was interfering with Chris doing his job too and didn't give Shesh any room to say no I don't want this. Chris as a mediator and then again um, lying about what the agreements were made in that mediation call it's it's there on internet now everyone can go and see what was agreed and what was not agreed and for someone uh, if, so, if some people think chris uh, conducted himself professionally i would disagree with them 
this is not what a professional mediator does. And um, Steve, shame on you, seriously. The way you behaved in that call, shame on you. And um, uh, to try and impose a decision on Shesh, oh, she has been fully paid, again, shame on you. And for someone who has two channels with a collective subs of 40, 46K to go to a channel, another channel and give out a document and not even be present there, you're a coward. At least Shesh was present at Drunken Peasants to present her case. You're a fucking coward. And um, to, to go away from, to cut off from everyone and say, oh, I'm done, as if it's some sort of a mic drop, drop movement. It's a cowardice. It's cowardice. And um, I'm expecting my refunds to be made, Steve. I'll say it explicitly here, return me my money. I don't care what you think about it. It was my money, my hard earned money that you took under false pretenses. If you have any honor, you'll return it. And um, there's no going back for me from, from here. I was, I had even told everyone, if even if this was, there was a reconciliation between Shesh and Steve, I would not go back to NSS. I would continue to support Shesh, but um, I'm not going to go back to NSS or Steve. And um, yeah, the sheer entitlement that she, uh, Steve has shown for other people's hard work, um, I, I'm still not over that. I'm still not over that. Uh, and um, to people who are making excuses for Steve that, oh, he has gone through a lot for the last two years, every one of us has had their shit in our own, li our own lives. And to say, say that Shesh did not go through her... her I, I know it's not saying that Shesh didn't go through her own shit, but to excuse Steve's behavior by saying that he went through a lot Shame on you for enabling it at this point. And for people who are trying to say, oh, we never, we were like staunchly supporting Steve previously. We had our disagreements with Steve, but they were in private. So everything looked very smooth at the front. We made sure we approached Steve in private and told him that this is what we think is wrong. And he would say, trust me. And we would like, okay. You he mean you're a responsible adult? adult? <laughs> yeah. And the way he has had a tantrum since I made my tweet, I had no idea how much influence I had in the community when I made that tweet. I had no fucking clue. Seriously, I'm still astounded at the level of support that uh, people have come to me with, and especially uh, people who have tried to support Shesh through me. It's awesome. Thank you so much. This, this should be a classic example to tell you that we don't blindly believe Steve. We have our contentions, but we used to solve it out privately. So yeah, Steve. This could have all for... been solved privately and just not was always yeah. an option. Steve has refused. Yeah. He dragged the mods in this. And for some reason didn't expect to Shesh to come up with a support person in the mediation call. That was absolutely Which is bizarre immoral. because he agreed to that. He said, Yeah, no, bring bring Manya yeah. or bring whoever. And then in the mod call, he's like, I don't even know Manya was gonna be here. And it's like, dude, what? This wasn't even a day ago. Yeah. yeah. In the mediation call, he was like, so, and he would say something else in the mod call, oh, I want extrication, and then send a garbage contract to Shesh. What the well, fuck is going on with I've this seen, if your yeah, memory checked? I've seen a couple of people say that, well, it doesn't make sense. Steve always said he wouldn't give any power or anything over to anybody, which I never asked for, by the way. But he also said in the mod meeting that he was just going to give me the channel. So it's like he's saying one thing over here, then he's saying another thing over here, then he's saying another thing over here, and then he cycles back to this other thing. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's a major he's... point. I think most people did not, like, actually catch that, that he said that that was a thing that occurred to him at one point, and it's like, what? Your, your behavior now it totally contradicts that. I don't know. And for people saying that I was emotional or I was shouting in the mediation call, I had to do that because Chris was not doing his job. Yeah, I mean, you weren't any Simple more emotional. I would say you were less emotional than Steve was. Yeah, Steve yeah, was yeah. the one and who kept shouting you down. Like you said, like, yeah, three things. Manya, you said, like, things. three things. And maybe for those people, maybe, maybe, um, uh, uh, maybe have a look at your internal misogyny before you do that. For some reason, Steve has excused that behavior, but I am being pointed out. That kind of tells me that you're being subconsciously misogynist. Women are supposed to behave nicely and should be calm and, you know, collected. 
anger, anger and disappointment is a valid emotion. Everyone's allowed to have it, even in a mediation call. So yeah, fuck you to all of the, all of those morons. Uh, that's all I have to say. I know it's a long monologue, but yeah, I'm I'm here supporting Shesh as in whatever capacity she thinks I can. And fuck you, Steve. That's me. All right. Who else? What else you got for me? Well, I mean, I can see that uh, maybe Steve might be a little bit emotional since he's taken up, uh, you know, as a hobby, disappointing women and fucking his face up. I think Mr. Serious is mad. <laughs> Ooh, he's going for the... Uh, he's going for the burns today. Burn. Um, <laughs> anybody who wants to ask me questions, I mean, you can feel free to ask questions down in the comments below. I'll, I'll keep an eye out. Uh, hopefully this is the last thing I have to do on this, but if there's anything that I don't think was addressed in anything previous or is needs to be addressed that hasn't really come up, um, I'm more than happy uh happy to do so i'm not i'm not i'm not like gonna be like oh no this is the last thing if there's any reasonable question that hasn't come up yet then i'm not gonna answer no no it's it's fine it's not a big deal um sarita yeah, I have a final thought yeah yeah go for it you must and i mean must respect your collaborators and you must respect your community when you lose both it's over. Yep. I think that's I think that's good advice. Um, Sarita asked, uh, said, uh, uh, love you, Trash. I'm uh, going to go do some research on what happened, but you're awesome. Or if you can get a TLDR, that'd be cool. I did see, I think, Jack give a TLDR for them real quickly in the chat, but um, I will add to the description um, links to all of the videos that have come out, so that way that will kind of hopefully help. I mean, I'm not going to put Tina and and uh aaron's in there because i don't think it's i'll put the direct ones so it would be the mod call the mediation call me on drunken peasants and then this one in like a quick little but 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 so people have a quick reference for it in the description um <laughs> manya says for 20 respect your artists for fuck's sakes hashtag choosing beggars <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, I'll update that as soon as we're off of here. Um, Al, I didn't think you had any last words, and I think Rez was the other one, too. Yeah, I don't even know what to say. Um, I'm, I'm better at just, like, responding to things directly, um, and if I have to, like, collect my thoughts, it takes me a while sometimes. <laughs> yeah, no, there's no pressure. Um, I just feel like, I don't know, do you guys want to, like, play a game does anybody want to play a game after this i'll just watch until i pass out <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah we can we can hang out in the discord afterward um i have kept the discord a little bit closed to newer members just while this stuff was going on so once things have probably settled in the next couple of days um that will I'll, I'll put a new link out um i just didn't want people getting accidentally caught up in in nonsense that were just kind of coming by so so that'll I'll, I'll post a new link to that um, and then it probably at the beginning of next week. Um, Rez, do you have anything? Yeah, so three things. Uh, Jack, Roxanne wanted to know the name of your cat. Oh, his name's Shiva. There you go. Uh, two, I was planning on hanging out in the Discord for a few hours at least, playing some Elden Ring and just chatting, so if anyone wanted that to... That sounds perfect. Cool. Yeah, I'll also join you guys when I get home. And uh, three, this is probably going to be the last thing I'd say about this situation for a while. So, here goes. <clears throat> Stop! <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> rage quit again. All right, I'm going to... I think that's a fair thing to call it on. I think uh, that's there's been enough said. I think we answered pretty much all of the questions. Um, between, like, I realistically, I don't think you really need anybody's opinions on this. Uh, I don't even know if there's that much more that needs to be clarified than what's in the mediation call, the mod call, and the two pieces of paperwork that are now out and available. And, and now you know that Steve can't be trusted whatsoever to not put out uh, documentation that uh, he doesn't have permission to... Uh, to be 
putting out there. So Mr. Don't Share DMs is uh, full of shit. All right. Uh, I think that's the... Uh, it's the transparency. I think that's uh, I think so. I think that, oh my God. I think that's what I'm gonna end on. And uh, just to clarify my position for anybody who still is not sure, I never had any contention with any control. I never had any contention with money. I never had any contention about extrication or l- wanting to leave the show. These are all things that Steve brought up, and you can see that in the mod call and in the mediation call. I have no problem moving on and leaving the show if that's what Steve wanted to do. That's totally fine. However, if my agreed payment is supposed to be a 50-50 portion of the profits of the show and he wants to cut me out of that and cut me out of the show as a host, then he's no longer paying me what the agreed upon payment was supposed to be in the first place. So then it turns into a back pay issue. Simple as that. It's really not that complicated. Have a good night, everybody. I'll see y'all next time with not this, with any luck. (laughs) Bye. Yeah. Cheers. Do it again, Mania. I missed it.